is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Arizona. Sweet home, finally back in Arizona as we open things up tonight for a 10 game homestand against the National League West. The first of three against the San Francisco Giants, who are desperately trying to stay within striking distance of the Dodgers division lead. Coyotes night at the ballpark tonight. It's D backs baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from Chase Field and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume and Bob Brenly along the way. Good to be back home. First to three against the Giants with Ruby De La Rosa on the mound tonight. Bob, first time we've seen Ruby since May 25th. Yeah, you don't want to play the what if game, but Ruby was really throwing the ball well before his injury and a little bit of a soft landing for Ruby tonight, pitching against the San Francisco Giants, a team he's had success against. Three and one as a starter in his career with an ERA under three. Well, he pitched Monday in a start for Class A Visalia in the Cal League, threw only 30 pitches, so this is going to be a quick one tonight. Yeah, Chip wouldn't put an exact. in both ERA and strikeouts. The very definition of a horse in the rotation. You see what he did against the Diamondbacks on July 10th. One of the best games of his career. He's won four of his last five, including a 10 strikeout performance against the Cubs last time out. That start on July 10th, he took a no hitter to the eighth inning. Jake Lamb broke it up, and tonight Madgum goes for career victory number 100. It's the D-backs and the Giants back home at Chase. First pitch coming up. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. Buy Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Double Jack Burger today only at Jack in the Box. Buy Bank of America. Life's better when you're connected. Buy Oregano. Step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano. Your neighborhood pizza joint. Location statewide. And buy your Valley Honda dealers where you get more standard features for less money.
the Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Lone Butte Casino. Get in on big wins. By Chaz Roberts, air conditioning and plumbing, choose Chaz. By Tire Pro, for the best selection of Continental and general brand tires, visit your local Arizona Tire Pros today. And by Gigablast, 100 times more powerful internet from Cox. Bring on tomorrow. Well, not only is it great to be back home, it's great to have the roof and panels open tonight. Coyotes night at Chase Field. Ruby De La Rosa is back. Diamondbacks baseball. The Giants are in town. First pitch is next on Fox Sports Arizona. Well, how about this return home? The roof and panels are open. 98 degrees, and we are set for Diamondbacks baseball. A long 10-game homestand begins tonight with the first of three against the San Francisco Giants, who had baseball's best record in the first half of the year. They've had baseball's worst record in the second half, Bob, 17 and 32 since the All-Star break. Boy, a lot of things in baseball are hard to figure out, but that's one of the toughest this season. Here's how Bruce Bochy is going to line them up tonight. Denard Span out in center field, leading it off. Angel Pagan in left field, batting second. Buster Posey doing the catching. Brandon Crawford at shortstop. He's a guy to keep an eye on against Ruby De La Rosa. Good career numbers for Crawford. Hunter Pence out in right field. Brandon Belt at first base. Joe Panic at second. Eduardo Nunez down at third base. And Madison Bumgarner, the left hander, on the mound. This is the final stop for the Giants on a three city road trip. And as Ruby De La Rosa takes the mound, let's go downstairs to Kate. Kate. Well, guys, the players admitted to me there's an added excitement to open this home stand with Ruby back on the mound. After all, he was the most consistent arm in this rotation to start the season. Now, the Diamondbacks management is focused on one thing, and that is Ruby ending this season on a healthy note. They're trying to build him up to a 70 pitch count, so he will be on a short leash tonight, but we'll see how this all plays out. Ruby is our Arizona Ford starting pitcher, his first appearance since May 25th, and he has been sorely missed. Shut down with right elbow inflammation, a UCL sprain, and it's likely he throws just three innings tonight and then give way to another starter in long relief. And uh, hopefully you heard Brandon Webb on the pregame show talking about Ruby De La Rosa. When he's at his best, he's working quickly between pitches, but taking his time to execute his delivery to home plate. There was a time early this season when Ruby was extremely slow between pitches. 
allowed himself too much time to think out there on the mound. When he works quicker, he works more effective. Coming off a two-inning rehab stint with Class A Visalia on Monday against the San Jose Giants. Our eye on defense for the D-backs is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Mitch Haniger getting a start in left field tonight against the left-hander Bumgarner. A.J. Pollock out in center field. Yasmani Tomas over in right. It'll be Drury and Owings on the left side of the infield with Segura and Goldschmidt on the right side. Wellington Castillo doing the catching for right-hander Ruby De La Rosa. The crew chief is behind the plate tonight. Dale Scott has the balls and strikes. Balkin Bob Davidson is our first base home, so be careful. Dave Morales at second and Dan Isonia is our third base umpire. And before we get started, BB, it's time for your Valley Honda dealers key to the game. Well, believe it or not, we have the numbers. We actually have one more player on the roster than the Giants have available tonight. One more position player, that is, and the Diamondbacks have been three games better than the Giants in the second half of the season. So we've got the numbers in our favor. Giants five games behind the Dodgers NLS lead. They have lost 11 of their last 17. So we are set to go. Good to have Ruby De La Rosa back out there and good to be back home as the Nard Span steps in to lead it off. Dodgers, in case you're wondering, are at Miami tonight. And the Marlins lead L.A. 4 nothing in the seventh inning. And we're underway here in Phoenix with strike one. Span 266, the nine home runs already a career high. He sat out the last two games for the Giants with some knee soreness. And as he steps in here, he is hitless in his last 20 at bats. A ball and a strike. Well, stop me if you've heard this before, partner, but an opposing hitter that likes to hit at Chase. Everybody does. Yeah, Denard Span last two years here at Chase Field is 14 for 29. That's a 483 batting average. Well, he'll take whatever he can get, Bruce Bocha. His club is sputtering big time. Drives it to center. A.J. Pollock is over there. And that's one away. Yeah, Bruce Bocha really has a mess at the end of ball games when he has a lead. Santiago Casilla, the incumbent closer, has really hit rough times lately. Uh, we're told it's probably going to be closer by committee until somebody really takes hold of that job here in the last three weeks of the season. Yeah, Giants suffered a walk-off loss at Colorado Wednesday. They had a two-run lead in the ninth, and the Rockies got three. Angel Pagan, 278 and nine homers. Mentioned Span hitless in his last 20 at bats. Pagan is really sputtering as well. He's one for 25 on this road trip, but he takes ball one. Giants lost three of four at Wrigley Field. That's where they started. They just dropped two of three in Colorado. Now they finish up with three games here at Chase Field. 2 0 on Pagan. Three balls and no strikes. Ruby trying to throw a strike here. Diamondbacks want Ruby working his way back with whatever is left of this season in a starting role. That's where they see him next year. And so if that means piggybacking a starter out of the bullpen in long relief behind Ruby rather than have him just pitch the rest of the year in a relief role working short appearances every time that's fine because they want him starting next season. So it's a common occurrence at the minor league level. It happens all mm -hmm. the time when you're trying to stretch guys out. Fly to left field to Hanager should be no problem. Two down. Yeah, the starting pitchers on a pitch count or coming back off an injury or working on a certain pitch. It's not uncommon to piggyback starters in the minor leagues. Have one guy start the game, go three, four, Catcher, five innings, and then the other starter come Buster, in and finish up. And Braden Shipley was originally scheduled to start this game, so perhaps we see Braden come in about the fourth inning or so. But that's all TBA. Here's Buster Posey. I think the fact that Braden is in the bullpen might be a tip off that <laughs> a little bit of a tip off. He'll be out there at some point. Owen oh, what on the Giants catcher. Boy, none of these guys right now are hitting span hitless in 20 at bats. If you got Pagan one for 25 on the road trip and here's Posey who's stuck at a four for 26 right now. I was talking to the TV analyst for the Giants before the ball game, Mike Kruko, uh, who tends to exaggerate a little bit, but he <laughs> said uh, 
We went into Chicago and hit 100 as a team and then went into Colorado and did worse. It's hard to do. Roby. Nice little breaking ball there. Strikes out Posey a 1 2 3 first. D backs coming up against Manbo. and panels open your Arizona Ford starter for the Giants is Madison Bumgarner is 30th start this year and see that 2-5-1 ERA that is third best among all major league starting pitchers Max Scherzer and Jose Fernandez the only two pitchers in the game with more strikeouts and to make matters worse the last time Bumgarner faced the D-backs he took a no hitter into the eighth inning that was at AT&T Park July 10th. He's got three home runs and seven runs driven in this season. He might be their best hitter tonight. <laughs> he might be. Yeah. I mentioned uh, he's won four of his last five starts. However, his ERA stands at 420 over that span of five starts. Tonight he goes for his 100th career victory. Let's take a look at the lineup for Chip Hale's Diamondbacks. We're in the teal tonight. I like this unit. Gene Segura leading it off at second base. Chris Owings once again at shortstop batting second. A.J. Pollock out in center field. Paul Goldschmidt at first base. Wellington Castillo behind the plate. Yasmani Tomas in right field. It'll be Brandon Drury at third base. Mitch Hanniger in left field. And Ruby De La Rosa on the mound. Roof and panels open tonight for the first time since June 14th. So it's been a while. Love it. Nice welcome home. Gene Segura tied for the National League lead in hits with the Nationals Daniel Murphy. And there's strike one. Fourth in the league in hitting at 316. And you see that OPS 833. That's up more than 220 points over what it's been each of the last two years. So there was a lot of speculation that Segura once he got out of Milwaukee and into a different environment would thrive and boy that has been the case big time this year. It'd be very easy to make the argument that Gene Segura has been the most valuable player of this team from day one. You know he's been the most consistent certainly. He would get my vote that's for sure. Speaking of Daniel Murphy. Yeah. Yes he did. Yes he did. I know you're getting up into that beat the streak <laughs> territory where. It gets you know start to get close to 20. I know you get nervous. Yeah. Well Murphy got one early but Trey Turner went to his fourth at bat before he got his knock tonight. Up to 21 now. Has he hit in every game this year Trey Turner. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so you're at 21. Yeah. Wow. That's a, a season high right. Yes it is. Good to have that uh, box already checked before we even get started. I will say though that the cooler was in the booth and actually touched my phone so I'm not sure what effect that'll have on tomorrow's picks. Time to get a new case. Curve ball strikes out Segura. All right on defense for the Giants brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. 
Hunter Pence out in right field. Denard Span in center field. Angel Pagan over in left. It'll be Nunez and Crawford on the left side of the infield with Panic and Belt on the right side. Buster Posey behind the plate tonight for left-hander Madison Bumgarner. All right then. All right then. Chris Owings really thriving in this new spot in the order of the two hole for CEO. There's a strike from Bumgarner 288 and two home runs for Chris. He has it safely in six straight games and eight of his last nine and is sitting over 350 this year versus the Giants. Try that backdoor slider but missed and it's one and one. Giants just four and six in Madison Bumgarner's ten starts in the second half of the year. But most of those wins have come lately. Adbum has won four of his last five starts. Previous start was last Saturday at Wrigley Field, the one of four games the Giants won there against the Cubs, and Adbum struck out ten in six innings. To the breaking ball and missed. It's two balls and two strikes on Chris Owen. As you can tell pretty early on with Madison Bumgarner, if he's hitting the corners of the plate, staying out of the middle early in the ball game, it's probably going to be a rough night and you're really going to have to scramble to score runs against him. But if he's making mistakes in the middle of the plate, his command is not as fine as it usually is, and that's when you can get to him. Even though he's won four of those last five starts, his ERA over that span is over four, so he's been a little more hittable lately. Brandon Crawford has that one. Throws out Owings by a step. Two down. Center fielder, number 11, A.J. Pollock. Here's A.J. 250 and two home runs this year. This is his 12th game of the season. But Goldie was talking a little while ago about having A.J. Pollock back and he said he just forget how good he is. Not the greatest power hitter but he's got power. He's not Billy Hamilton fast but he can steal bags and beat out infield hits and. Then you look at the plays he's made on defense and see how smart of a player he is and you realize wow this guy is really really good. He's one of those guys you talk to crusty old baseball people and they'll just explain it by saying A.J. Pollock is a ball player. Whatever you need him to do to help your team win a game he's capable of doing it. Like he's hardly skipped a beat since the elbow surgery. Well, he's been establishing with fastball, then trying to backdoor that slider and curveball. Drop that one in there, and it's 0 and 2, at least in the eyes of Dale Scott, the plate umpire. There's some kind of eyes. <laughs> There's a fly ball, deep center field. Denard Spann looking up and he's got it just under the home run porch. AJ gave it a ride, but it's out number three. A little frustrated there. No score after one, the D backs and the Giants.
Are you kidding me? A.J. Pollock limps off the field and he's out of the ball game after flying out to center. Here he is coming around the first base bag. Defenses changed for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Moving from left field to center field, number 19, Mitch Hanager. Now in left field, number 29, Kyle Jensen. There it is. So A.J. has had to leave the ball game. Mitch Hanager will move over from left field to center. And Kyle Jensen takes over and left. Seriously? Are you kidding? So as soon as we get word on what's wrong with A.J. Pollock, we will, of course, pass it along to you. Unbelievable. So Crawford leads off the second against Ruby De La Rosa. Brandon Crawford, 271 and 12 homers. He leads the Giants with 77 runs batted in. And I mentioned earlier that he has good numbers against Ruby De La Rosa in his career. Five for 17 with a couple of home runs. One and one on the Giants shortstop. Ruby works uh, nice quick. One, two, three. First inning struck out Buster Posey to win the top of the first. Expected to go three innings tonight. And then possibly give way to Braden Shipley to start the fourth. And check his swing. Good slider from De La Rosa. Two and two on Crawford. Ruby in that start Monday for Visalia at San Jose through 30 pitches. Two innings, 30 pitches, 22 strikes. That was four days after a one inning appearance with two strikeouts for Visalia at Stockton. Shift is on for Crawford who's worked the count full three and two. There was a small setback in the middle of last month when Ruby felt some forearm tightness. He was able to get through that and get three minor league rehab appearances in. And now getting some big league innings in the books before the end of this year. Crawford drives that toward the right field foul pole, but it's out of play. Ruby once he was shut down by the D-backs had an MRI because of nagging pain in his arm. The worst was feared considering he's already had one Tommy John surgery. But the MRI showed no structural damage. They checked with Dr. Andrews for a second opinion. He said you wouldn't need surgery. That the ligament was stretched but not torn, thank goodness. So it was a UCL sprain in that right elbow. First big league appearance tonight since May 25th. Crawford can check. Good slider from Ruby. And he's got his second strikeout. Showing a good hard slider in the early going. Very effective against left handed hitters. They like that ball down and in, but that late movement takes it a little bit farther down and in than they can handle. Hunter Pence now. Pence coming off a three hit game Wednesday in Colorado. Giants were off yesterday, adding 278 with 10 home runs. Pence, maybe the one giant bat that's starting to heat up lately. He's hitting nearly 320 in his last 16 games, and he's homered twice this month. One and one. Hunter Pence, you always have to be careful from the middle of the plate in. You can see that set up in the batter's box there, and he steps even farther into the bucket as the pitch is delivered. He's looking for something middle in. He can pull hard to left field. Look at those stems. Man. <laughs> Skinny legs, but a wall of muscle from the waist up. Out in front, a tapper that rolls fair, a perfect.
perfect swing and bunt. Brandon Drury, come on, ball. Nope. Boy, it stayed right on that line. That was the only thing Brandon could do there. An infield single for Pence. Now yeah, that's absolutely the right play there. Brandon was playing back, respecting the power of Hunter Pence, and he just gooses one down that third baseline. Hopefully, he hit a cleat mark, and that ball ricochets into foul territory. Got on the line, but then <laughs> refused to go across it. Ruby, what right. can you do? What can you do? Well, we'll go to work on Brandon Belts, pitching out of the stretch for the first time tonight. Bill Hayes coaching down there at first for the Giants. Roberto Kelly at third. Shift is on for Belt. Brandon Belt leads the Giants with 15 home runs. He's hitting 269. And he's been slumping badly for several weeks now, but he showed some signs of life in their last game Wednesday at Colorado. Couple of hits in RBIs. He homered in his first home run since August 13th. So it had been nearly a month. Hunter Pence does not have a stolen base this year. He's missed a lot of time because of hamstring problems. Fastball inside is one and one. Diamondbacks have done a good job with Brandon Belt this year. He's hitting only 208 in 16 games against the D-backs without a home run. Powers up the fastball at 95 and blows it by him. A ball and two strikes on the Giants' first baseman. I wasn't quite sure what to expect from Ruby De La Rosa, but his stuff is very crisp here in the early going. Good fastball in the mid 90s. That slider we've seen down and into a couple of the Giants' left handed hitters has been real good early on. Do you find guys coming back from the types of problem that Ruby had, right elbow inflammation, might shy away from a hard breaking ball like that? Yeah, you would think so. I mean, you know, with every pitcher, it's a little bit different. What pitch? Bothers that area the most. For some guys, it's a breaking pitch. For other guys, it's a fastball. Sometimes it's a change up depending on the grip that you use, but uh, no sign of any obvious discomfort as he's throwing those pitches tonight. And throwing them with conviction, which is great to see. You got to throw strikes to Belt. He's fourth in the league in walks. Full count three and two. Joe Panic on deck. Goldie will hold Pence on the bag at first. Missed inside. Went to that slider. Couldn't get it that time. So the first base on balls for Ruby. Two on and one out for the Giants second baseman Panic. And again that start Monday for Visalia at San Jose was a 30 pitch effort. And he's right at 30 pitches now. Nobody throwing yet in the Diamondback bullpen. And if Ruby has to come out in the middle of an inning. They would likely bring in a reliever to finish off the rest of that inning and then bring a starter out there to start a clean inning next time. But no one throwing as of yet. They've got Pence at second and Belt at first. One out for Panic. Change up on the first pitch. 0-1. Joe Panic, 250 with 10 home runs. Missed the Giants last game with a sore back. 
Yeah, Giants really struggled to get hits on that road trip on this road trip rather. But especially with runners in scoring position seven for forty two that's a one sixty seven team average they struck out fourteen times in those forty two at bats with runners in scoring position. And panic hasn't done a whole lot he's two for eighteen at the plate without an extra base hit this month. It's almost like there's no explaining the Giants. I mean, when they were injured, they had the best record in baseball in the first half of the year. They got healthy and got worse, much worse. That is tough to figure. 17 and 32 in the second half of the year. They've lost 11 of their last 17 games. One pitch misses up and away, and Ruby's getting himself in trouble here behind on panic three and one with Eduardo Nunez on deck. And on the other hand, you've got the Dodgers who have four rookies in their starting rotation right now and had Clayton Kershaw on the shelf for the better part of a couple of months. They're just trying to threaten to run away and hide in the National League West. Dodgers right now trailing at Miami. Marlins lead at 4 1. They're in the ninth. Giants five back of LA coming into play today. He's just not locating that fastball. The slider and the changeup have been okay, but he's just not throwing that fastball for strikes. A swing and bunt single and a couple of walks will bring out Mike Butcher. The Giants have the bases loaded with one out for Eduardo Nunez. Ruby seems to be about missing up and away with that hard fastball a lot. It could just be a mechanical issue and that's not uncommon either with a guy coming back off of a rehab uh, assignment. Extra adrenaline looked like Andrew Chafin beginning to throw in the bullpen as you mentioned if you need help just to get out of the inning it'd probably be a relief pitcher first and then Braden Shipley to start an inning clean. It's good to see Andrew Chafin back and throwing in a diamondback Number uniform. Number ten. Haven't seen and one Andrew, Andrew since yeah. early July. Coming off some shoulder problems. So let's see what Ruby can do with the Giants third baseman Eduardo Nunez. Comes in with a five game hitting streak. Nunez homered Tuesday at Colorado. You've got Hunter Pence at third. Brandon Belt at second and Joe Panic at first. One out. Same deal, fastball up and away. Nunez 279, he's got 15 homers. An all star this year with the Minnesota Twins acquired by the Giants at the trade deadline. A couple of days after that, San Francisco sent Matt Duffy to Tampa Bay in exchange for pitcher Matt Moore. Moore will start the game here Sunday against Zach Greinke. So Nunez has taken over at third. Wellington Castillo's got that under control. Everybody will stay put. That Gene Segura coming in, offering some words of encouragement here to Ruby De La Rosa. He missing up consistently. Very nearly hit Nunez with that last delivery. You know, it might sound overly simplistic, but it looks like he's just rusty. This would be a good time to get Chafin up. You've got Bumgarner on deck, then span the lefty. You can flip Pagan around after him. 2 0 on Nunez. There's a fastball for a strike, 2 and 1. Ruby's only worked seven innings in three rehab appearances, one in rookie ball and two with Visalia. Nine strikeouts and two walks. There's a fly ball, right center field. Mitch Hanniger's out there. Yasmani Tomas as well. Tomas in front of Hanniger. Here comes Pence. 
And the throw is just not quite in time. And the Giants take the one nothing lead. The RBI for Nunez. The ball was up in the air for a long time. Either outfielder could have caught the ball, Hanniger in center or Tomas in right. Neither guy actually had a really good angle and a lot of momentum, so Tomas took it, unleashed a strong throw to home plate just a tick late to get Hunter Pence. Madison Bumgarner. We are told that A.J. Pollock's injury is a left groin. Left groin for A.J. Which he injured rounding first on a fly ball out to deep center field. So when the bottom of the first inning and had to leave the ball game. So Mitch Hanniger is now in center and Kyle Jensen in left. Good slider from Ruby. 0 oh 2 on Madison Bumgarner. 30 pitches his last time out Monday at San Jose. Now up to 40. 22 strikes. He's given up one hit and a rolling infield single, and he's walked two. Two strikeouts. Bumgarner lays off the slider. Braden Shipley's also started throwing in front of the mound in the bullpen. Not quite on there yet. He's got a much longer warm up process, obviously, than a reliever would. 1 2 to Mad Bum. Just missed with that fastball. Mentioned earlier the Bumgarner with three home runs on the season. He struck out about half of his at bats this year, which is not uncommon for a pitcher, but he's also drawn nine walks, which is a ridiculous amount of walks for a pitcher. Yeah, you're right. That's a ton. That's yeah. a career for some guys. Two and two. Fastball is in there. So Ruby strands two. He finishes with three strikeouts and walk two on Coyotes night here at the ballpark. And Mike Smith will join us when we come back.
Ballpark as we celebrate 20 years. Shane Doan is here, but uh, more importantly, we've got the goaltender. They're, they're really the backbone of the whole team back there is the goalie Mike Smith. Many welcome. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. You know, you got a, a well, you're in the catbird seat, I guess, down there. How's it look? <laughs> That's a nice view from down here. I ain't gonna get used to this down here. Hey, can you steal some signs or something? <laughs> I was trying. I was trying earlier there when you, were, you had me on hold, but uh, I didn't get anything yet. Goldie's going to lead off the second against Madison Bumgarner. Diamondbacks trail at one nothing on Coyotes nights. Oh, there's a little Smitty. That's some hair. That's I was just going to mention that to Mike. <laughs> we just showed a shot of the little one there. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah he's got some nice locks on him. Hey, you used to have hair about that length as well. You you cut it all off though. Well, uh, what's no, up with I'm that? Actually, I'm actually a little jealous of my kids. They have <laughs> better hair than I do now. When do you guys get going for real? Oh, uh, the 22nd of September here at camp starts. Oh, wow, that's coming up about 10 days. Yeah, it's going to come quick now. Oh, it's, been a, it's been a long summer. I bet it has. Plus, you only played what, about 30, 32 games, something like that, last year. So yeah, I know I you were a, injured. I had an unfortunate injury and obviously missed a lot of games. So I'm uh, I'm ultra excited about being back. I bet. 298 for Goldie with 20 homers. Now, Smitty, for a catcher, spring training is probably the worst time of year because you're constantly in a squat, warming up pitchers and blocking balls in the dirt and doing all your various drills. What's uh, what's a preseason like for a goalie? Uh, it's about the same, <laughs> but uh, you know what? Camp's gotten a lot shorter over the years, and uh, um, it used to be you know a month and month and a half long, and by the end of that, you're pretty well worn out. But because uh, um, of the World Cup this year too. Um, you know camps got pushed back so it's only going to be you know two and a half weeks or so so it won't be too bad this year. I think most baseball players especially catchers would say the two and a half weeks of spring training is plenty. <laughs> well, I agree. Yeah I agree. <laughs> but then you've got the pitchers that say they need the whole oh, six or eight yeah, whatever the it is. Pitchers you know. I mean the offseason nowadays for us is is all about getting into good shape and. Most guys are skating, uh, you know, a month leading into camp anyway. So I think by the time camp hits, you're ready to, for the season to start. Are, are goalies like pitchers? That, that, you know, they're out there by themselves, whether it's on the mound or in the net. They have a whole pregame routine. They're, they're sort of almost individuals with a team around them. Do you find some comps there, Mike, between the pitcher and the goaltender? Yeah, absolutely. I think we have a routine. We got in. Some guys are more superstitious than others. Uh, um, for myself, I just go off a of routine more than superstition. So. Um, but yeah, it's a very similar position. Obviously, you're out there by yourself or um, with hockey. At least you have someone to back you up. But I think, you know, the fielders out here are a lot like defense in, in hockey, too. So there's some simulators there. And, and I know there's some quirky uh, superstitions that pitchers do have. But uh, for the most part, I, I, I just go on routine. So you got you have none, huh? I have none, really. Good. I'm uh, um, pretty laid back when it comes to that stuff. I don't get too. Uh, uh, too crazy with superstitions. I got enough things to worry about with four kids at home and, <laughs> and, uh, and just stopping, you know, 100 mile an hour slap shots and stuff like that. So superstitions would just clutter my mind. How of the Coyote, you've been there five years now, this will be six. So how has the franchise evolved during your time here, Mike? Oh, it's, 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 I think it's been, uh, it's been a crazy ride since I got here. I think when I first got here, obviously no ownership group. Uh, uh, very limited budget, uh, you know, but a very good team when I got here. I mean, I ended up making the, the conference finals my first year, and um, it kind of didn't go the way we wanted to from that that point forward. And I think the last couple of years we've seen a big change in in getting an owner or a bunch of owners that uh, want to make this this team really work in the valley. And and you know, as players, we really believe that can happen. And um, this year with you know hiring John Chike as our general manager a young guy that um, is gung-ho to make this team work and has done a lot of good things for the franchise and already in the short stint that he's been the, the general manager of this team. So I think a lot of excitement going on uh, in the organization this year and um, a lot of good moves he's made over the summer. So we're real excited about it. Yeah I get the sense that there's a lot of optimism from Coyotes fans around here. Oh, with, um, they should be. I think yeah. there's a, you know, we hadn't done a lot in the last couple of years, and I think, uh, you know, John's done an unbelievable job this summer of acquiring, you know, some 
veteran players along with some uh, you know we have a, a group of prospects that come in this league and, and fight for jobs next year which is real exciting so I think you got to build your you know the way that the NHL is now with the parity of the league and the salary cap it's real important that your young kids uh, can come in and play and we saw it last year with you know Max Domi, Duclair, and Jordan Martin, and Kobe Reader to name a few and, and those those players are going to be one year you know more in the league um, we have younger players coming in now with you know Strom, Dvorak um, to name a couple but are uh, real exciting to see our prospects um, you know highly touted as you know we're right up there in the top of the league with with young uh, prospects so it's obviously real exciting uh, to be a part of the team right now. Plus the GM is 15 years old. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and, we, and we see that Mike in baseball all the time. Are there hockey saber metrics like there are baseball saber metrics? The owner is like 35, 40 years older than uh, Isn't he? than John Chaik. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty funny. But I mean, the the guy. I, I mean, I, I think he's probably heard that a lot. But he's just a really smart, smart guy, and and uh, has a real knack for obviously the uh, the analytics of the game. But I think he's just a really smart. Uh, smart mind that thinks the game real well and um, all the moves that he's done this summer is, is just real exciting and, and you know obviously real excited to get it, get it going now. Yeah, you mentioned the young guys on the team I would imagine that they bring a certain amount of energy that maybe is a little misplaced and it's up to the veteran players to kind of guide them at least that's the way it is in baseball the kids come up from the minor leagues are excited to be at the big league level and you know, running all over the field, acting crazy, but uh, at some point you have to rein them in a little bit and kind of teach them how to play the game. Is it the same thing in hockey? 100%. I think you look at the D-backs team now. I think you see some similarities with our team last year. Um, you know, there's there's bright spots throughout the lineup, and it's just about getting the right mix of veteran guys, and leadership, and young players that are eager to learn and eager to want to win. And um, if everyone's pulling on the same rope, I think you can do a lot of damage in, in both in both sports. Well, we don't want to have you on without showing your batting practice home run. So we're going to show it now. I know you don't have a monitor down there, but uh, what happened here in BP? I do have a monitor. Oh, I got under one there. Oh, you do it have one. It just happened okay, that the, the oh. fan was blown out, I guess, so it kind of carried. But hey, That was way back in the bullpen. That was, that was about my 25th swing, so I was getting a little tired. <laughs> like the home run derby. <laughs> Here's Yasbani Tomas. We're talking to Coyotes goaltender Mike Smith on Coyotes night here at Chase Field. Shane Doan will join us a little later. Yeah, we saw Mike at the Rogers Center earlier this summer when the Diamondbacks played the Blue Jays up there, and now you're here at Chase Field. In hockey, do you have favorite arenas and least favorite arenas that you play in? Yeah, the ones you do well and you love, and the ones you uh, you don't do so well and you hate. But uh, you know, there's always those stadiums you, you find that that uh, you play better in for some reason. And um, I'm trying to think about it too much, but I think there's there's a comfort level to whether it's lighting, the fans, or whatever it may be. I think it's uh, it just it's part of the game, I guess. And I think the baseball players would say the same thing when they go into a, a stadium full of people or yelling and screaming at them. Whether it's good or bad, I think it's it's uh, it's motivating and, and gets you in the game early on. One and one on Yasmani Tomas, goal to get first after a leadoff walk. Because there's surfaces like you, there's buildings, Mike, that have bad ice and good ice, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. There's some buildings that don't have. They shouldn't even have ice at all. <laughs> 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 but uh, there are some, you know, obviously some rinks that have really good ice too, and. You always love to play there because you feel a lot faster. Well, that, you don't want. Do you feel faster as a goaltender? I, I would think you would want slow ice as a goalie, wouldn't you? No, actually, the, the hard ice is is real nice because you can, you know, you, you grab in. There's it's smoother. It's you know, it's believe it or not, when the players it's come off their stick like it's supposed to, it's it's easier on the goalie to read. It's like sure. probably a catcher calling a fastball and. Then throwing a changeup or a curveball in there to you, it wouldn't look very good coming in. So I think it's kind of similar to a goalie where you're you're on not very good ice. It's all snowy and chippy. I think it, the puck the puck can roll a lot more and have a tendency to, to mess you up when it, you're staring it down. Two and two on Yasmani. Long inning here by the Diamondbacks. Bob really grinding out these ABs against Bumgarner. Goldie walk. Castillo fouled off about four, five, six pitches, and now two-two count on Tomas. 
Mike, I'm sure as a youngster, you played a lot of pond hockey growing up, and uh, with the Winter Classic becoming a big deal now in the NHL, uh, do you hope someday to play in one of those games outdoors? <laughs> they better hurry up, because I'm uh, I'm one of the older guys in the team now, though. But uh, absolutely, I think it's it'd be phenomenal to be a part of one of those games. I know, you know, there's been teams that have had it numerous times, and. I uh, haven't heard a bad thing about one of those games yet, so uh, hopefully soon they'll bring one to the desert. Yeah, didn't they have one in L.A.? Yeah, I think they did. They okay. did. They did. Yeah. yeah. So they, it doesn't have to be freezing cold to have one of those games. Nope. Just has to be a nice, cool night. Like like this. This would be a nice night for hockey. Yeah. It's nice to have everything opened up. As Monty Tomas strikes out. Well, before Brandon Jury comes up, now let's get your analysis on Shane Doan's BP because this is not good. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I think he broke his thumb there, and this is just come on, Doner. Oh man! Like, you got to get down and dirty. Look at this. Oh, well, the guy had goodness. like a hundred penalty minutes this year. This is just he not get, right. He's a little tougher than that, isn't he? Yeah, and he's on his phone, probably checking his baseball pool, which is in last in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you guys do uh, fantasy football? We did. We did do fantasy football. Yeah. Because um, that's big here. Yeah. I uh, I drafted blindly because someone messed the draft up. What do you mean? Uh, and I ended up getting the first overall pick, so I was actually. Very happy with my uh, my outcome of my team. Who'd you go with? I uh, I drafted Anton uh, oh, sorry Brown from the uh, oh Antonio the Brown sure. Antonio Brown sorry yeah yeah got the Seattle's Seattle's defense oh that's good somehow this is all blind though because I I wasn't someone signed up too many times for this he knows who it is <laughs> and Drury drives one to left center. Just like Mike Smith, it's a home run. Brandon Drury, his 11th. And the Diamondbacks take a 2 1 lead. It's a goal here, Smitty. That is beautiful. They make it look so easy, though, eh, guys? Like. Well, yours was about as far as that, wasn't it? I don't think. I, I pulled any more, any more left, and mine would have been foul, so. They all count the same, and this one's a big one. Drury's 11th. Center field, number 19. That was a bomb. Oh. That's that down and in area that Brandon Drury was so good at earlier in the season. It kind of lost it a little bit recently, but dropped the bat head on that ball and got it into the front row for a two run homer. The very first homer that Madison Bumgarner's given up in his last seven starts in this ballpark. That's a jumbo jack, a free jumbo jack tomorrow with the purchase of a large drink from our friends at Jack in the Box. Now here comes Bruce Bochy to talk to Dale Scott. Now the fan did uh, reach over with the glove and make a catch out there in the front row on that home run ball. Uh, you can review boundary calls on home runs. The question is, uh, was this ball going to clear anyway? I think there's no doubt it would have. Yeah, Mike, how does replay review work in hockey compared to what we're going through here with baseball? Uh, same kind of deal. There's a delay in the game. And and uh, the refs actually have an iPad in our sport that they go to so they have more of a say in the call, which I don't totally agree with because the play before, Donor might have yelled and screamed at him about, a, about something else. So if they're going to the video, video review about a goal that just got scored and we wanted to overturn it, I don't think they're going to be in our favor if Donor's screaming and yelling at him from the bench the whole game. Oh, so it's not nearly as objective. As it is here, that's they, a home run. They do send it to Toronto, and they have a say in it. But the ref, uh, I think the ref ultimately makes the call at the end. Hmm. So two on D-backs, and with two outs, here's Mitch Haniger talking to Coyotes goaltender Mike Smith on Coyotes night at the ballpark, and he's been great luck for us. <laughs> Mitch Haniger was in left field, had to move over to center when A.J. Pollock injured himself again. A.J. out with a left groin injury, suffered in the bottom of the first inning. So Haniger's in there, 231 and six RBIs. I know what that's like. Yeah, I should have thought of that before. That's not good.
You called that jury homer as soon as he hit it. You said gone. It sounded good off the bat. Look out down here. That bat almost got you. Oh no, that was far away, far, far away. <laughs> Smitty, who is the guy you least want to see coming at you on a breakaway? Oh wow, probably Patrick Kane in Chicago. He can make you look pretty, pretty stupid pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> now, are the little ones baseball fans or just hockey? They are. They are. I don't know if you guys can see him right now, but oh, yeah. he's he's sporting the, the D-back stuff. Looks good. Yeah, no, they they like they like anything that dad dad likes. So the oldest plays. Uh, this is first year of mini might hockey uh, at the ice den, and he plays uh, coach pitch t ball in the or coach pitch ball in the uh, Cal Ripken League. And this guy right here, he'll be four in December. He's going to play t ball for his first year nice. this year. So they love it. It's a lazy fly ball. Joe Panic calling for it. Well, Mike Smith, great job. You got us a home run, and we look forward to seeing you back there on the ice. Thanks, hey, Smitty. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Aaron since the end of May and Ruby gave up just one hit a rolling swing and bun single by Hunter Pence who came in on an Eduardo Nunez sacrifice fly he walked two, struck out three and looked a little rusty with that fastball but the slider was there and the velocity was good too. Yeah, looked good early you know, which is to be expected It's baby steps coming back from the injury that he had and stands to reason that he's going to have moments when he's really really good and moments where he's not so good and ideally you keep working forward until they're all good. And now Braden Shipley who was originally scheduled to start this game is your Arizona Federal Credit Union pitching change coming off a win Saturday over the Rockies at Coors Field. When he got 10 ground balls in that ball game and boy that is really where he's at his best when he's rolling those ground balls. And five and two third in that start against Colorado gave up four runs on eight hits a couple of home runs. Ben gets this in the air along the right field line. Yasmani Tomas. Yeah, gave up a couple of home runs to guys that don't normally hit a lot of home runs. Gerardo Parra hit a solo homer against Shipley in the third, and then a two run homer off the bat of Daniel Descalso in the fifth. And it's Braden's first win since he beat the Mets that August 11th at City Field. So hopefully he can just take the ball here and. Run across the goal line as we start the third at the top of the giant order. Andrew Chafin had been warming up earlier. He'll come in now. That'll bring up Angel Pagan, who flied out his first time up. Huh? 
Well, gone in a five for 43 nosedive at the plate right now. And that includes four hits in two games against the D-backs at AT&T Park when we were there at the start of the last road trip. Well, there have been times in the past where this guy was probably the one Giants hitter you didn't want at the plate with the game on the line, but that's not the case recently. He's one for 20 this season here at Chase Field. One for 26 on this Giants road trip. But Pagan now 35. He's been able to stay healthy through the second half of this season. He had to sit out twice earlier this year with left hamstring trouble. Four year, $40 million contract that expires after this year. So this might be it. Only at first, he'll take it himself. Got a hustle to beat Pagan to the bag, even at the age of 35, and that's the second out. Catcher Buster Posey. Buster Posey struck out against Ruby De La Rosa to win the first. Two quick outs on seven pitches for Shipley. And Posey stuck in a four for 27 right now. How about this? He has Buster Posey gone 151 at bats without a home run, the longest home run drought of his career. There's a quick ground ball out. Braden Shipley doing what he does. A nice quick one, two, three, third with two ground balls. D backs lead the Giants 2 1. On D backs in the bottom of the third, and fans every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon weekdays at 6 30 in the morning, only on FS1. Braden Shipley, who took over to start the top third inning in relief of Ruby De La Rosa, will bat against Madison Bumgarner. The jury home run is 11th of the year. All the scoring so far for the Diamondbacks. Giants had a 1 0 lead on a Eduardo Nunez sacrifice fly. Span broke back. Now he's got to come in. Panics out there and he runs it down. Boy, did Denard Span get a bad read on that one. You're right, Span broke back initially, then just kind of froze in his tracks. He didn't see the ball initially off the bat, but Joe Panic makes up for it with a nice running over the shoulder catch out there in shallow center field. The leadoff man, Gene Segura, struck out his first time up against Bumgarner. Mad Bum tonight going for career win number 100. And of course, the last time Diamondbacks faced Madison Bumgarner, 
<laughs> he wants to know where that pitch was. Dale Scott says ball one. Well, looked pretty good to me. <laughs> Big sweeping breaking ball from a lefty. If you catch it on the inside corner, it had to cross the strike zone somewhere. I've seen this before with Dale Scott yeah. back there. Yeah. All right then. We can see how angry Madison Baumgartner is right now. He's just yelled a couple of really loud curse words down there that we could hear all the way up in the press box. Fronting on that fastball and it's two and one. Yeah, you see from the velocity readings, Madison Bumgarner's uh, calling card is not velocity. His mm -hmm. fastball is 90, 91, 92. It's just the location on those pitches and the assortment and the way he mixes them. Look makes at that. Him so effective. Quick glove hand. He looked like Mike Smith in the net for the Coyotes there. Mad Bum with the reflexes. He's still got a little anger working out there on the mound, so his reflex is a little quicker than normal. Tosses on to Brandon Belt for the out at first. One more look at the quick glove hand. Mentioned the last time the Diamondbacks faced him was the final game before the All Star break, that Sunday nighter at San Francisco, and he took a no hitter into the eighth inning against the D backs. Chris Owings grounded out his first time up. And with one out in that eighth inning, Jake Lamb singled into short right field. That broke up the no no. With Bumgarner in that game, one walk, 14 strikeouts. Through a one hitter. Curve ball is in there for strike two. D back so far tonight with just one hit. The Drury homer in the second. In his 11th of the year after a Goldie walk to lead off the inning. All right to Matt Williams at third. Sox beat the Blue Jays 13 3 tonight. Rick Porcello in the process becomes the Majors first 20 game winner this season. Well he's had a great year. He was a disaster last year Rick Porcello. What a turnaround it's been for him. The chopper to third Nunez has to charge Owings can run and he beats it out easily. That's a seven game hit streak now for C.O. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. No chance for Kyle Jensen now. A.J. Pollock flied out to deep center field to win the bottom of the first inning, but while he was rounding first base, A.J. injured his left groin, and so he had to come out of the ball game. Mitch Hanniger moved from left to center, and Jensen took over and left. This is a look at A.J. Pollock in the first. Denard Spann caught the fly ball right under the home run porch in left center field, but A.J., as you can see, had to come out. So it's a chance for Jensen, who has flied out twice and been hit by a pitch in his first three major league plate appearances. After putting up some monster numbers at Triple A Reno this year, 30 homers and 120 RBIs. But still looking for that first big league hit. CEO getting a big jump down there at first. Chris 16 for 18 in his stolen base attempts. Year for Kyle, by far the best season of his career, his eighth year in the minor leagues, and now finally getting his first look at the majors at the age of 28. Yeah. 
Just can't keep that one fair. 34 doubles, 30 homers, 120 RBIs in 134 games. That's a great year. You can Anywhere. See, you can see why Phil Nevin said he was one of my favorites. Yeah. Put up numbers like that, you tend to become the manager's favorite. Yep. Hitters count here two and one, so they'll keep Owings close. is here with us now that Reno's season ended. The manager for the Aces. There's Nev. Hitting coach Dave Baggett on the right. Managed Kyle Jensen all year at Reno. Owings holds. Bumgarner misses with a fastball. And Kyle Jensen's ahead three balls and a strike. Got a little jumpy on the 2 0 pitch, got way out in front of a Madison Bumgarner fastball and pulled it foul, but now another good hitter's count. See if we can measure one up right here. There it goes, Kyle Jensen! His first major league hit is a home run! Bumgarner, not a bad way to start your major league career. Way to go, Kyle. Yeah, put that one in the scrapbook. Boy, this is a nice at bat by a guy that's just feeling his way along here at the major league level. I mentioned got the 2 0 heater, was just a little bit too quick, a little bit too jumpy, but really waits on this 3 1 fastball well and barrels it up to left field. Nicely done. Congratulations. A two run home run by Drury in the second. Now a two run shot by Jensen in the third. A jumbo jack makes it 4 1 D backs. And here's Goldie who walked and scored his first time up. His first major league hit. Well, you love to see stuff like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot about September baseball we're not crazy about, but seeing young, young guys like him come up and get your first knock and have it leave the park against a guy that's going to win a bunch of Cy Youngs before his career is over. That's something to write home about. Going to have to retrieve that baseball out there. A couple of Chase Field staffers are down there trying to track it down. We need that one back. Well, Madison Bumgarner has been vulnerable to the long ball this year. He's now given up 23 home runs. That ties his career high in one season set four years ago. And he's in the top 10 in the league now for home runs allowed. Sixty pitches for Mad Bun, thirty-seven strikes, two and one to Goldie. Change up and it's two and two. Strikes out, but Kyle Jensen gets his first major league hit, a two run homer to make it 4 1. Shane Doan on Coyotes Night with us in the booth when we come back.
Valley, there's an old school coyote sweater. Yeah. And we've got Shane Doan. How about the Domi version right there? These are the new ones now. We've got Shane Doan in our booth here. We're in the Diamondback colors. Good to have you. Hey, thank you guys for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Really appreciate it. We wanted to give you the opportunity to defend yourself after uh, your boy Mike Smith really threw you under the Zamboni there. Yeah, he, he's really going to try to take advantage of that whenever he gets an opportunity to. And, uh, he's just that type of guy. He's not a guy that you you know enjoy being around. He's always hard on everybody. And he's uh, it's it's the way it goes in our room, I guess. How are you guys going to do this year? A lot of people, a lot of Coyotes fans I talk to, they're excited. Nice mix of veterans and young guys. Really, I mean, our our young guys are special. So it's uh, we got an opportunity. The next step is really, I mean, everybody and now and again has a great first year, and that next year is really going to kind of establish themselves. Brandon Crawford leads off the giant fourth against Braden Shipley. Shane Doan is with us in the booth here on Coyotes night at the ballpark. You know, every time I looked up last year, you were scoring a goal. <laughs> you turned into a goal scorer again. Yeah, I try to turn back time a little bit. That was one of those. They weren't too many pretty ones. Hey, they all count. That's right. <laughs> Either scoring a goal or starting a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Penalty <laughs> minutes were way up. Goals are way up. And there was talk that that might be your last year, but now you're back. Yeah, yeah. That, Maybe some of my coaches were thinking it should be a good <laughs> idea for me to have the last year. Did because last year went so well. I know mean, you're always thinking about that at your age. It's a hard game. When did you decide. All right. I, I still got a lot of hockey left in me here. I really didn't until the end of the year. I mean I, I talked about it with my family. And we made that decision as a group. And, um, I enjoyed last year though. Round ball the second for Segura. All right. Let's take a look at batting practice. Now this is your opportunity. To defend yourself, what, what's happening here? Oh, well, I think I get a little ahead of myself. I don't know. You guys got to tell me. And uh, it wasn't bad. I had, had, had a couple of okay cuts, but a couple that see that hurt my hand. And then this. Oh, see, I didn't want to crash into the wall. I hit the warning track. You're I, a hockey player. Ah, <laughs> uh, that one. We. Robbie Ray was distracting me. And we, were dis <laughs> we were discussing some things and how amazing he's been this year with his strikeouts and. And then he said, oh, there's a ball. And I tried to react. Yeah, by then it was too late. Yeah. Sure. Well, see, if there would have been a player standing there with the Giants jersey on, you could have mashed him up against <laughs> yeah. the wall. That's huge. I get nervous around the board. Don't <laughs> get hit. There's Hunter Pence. Now you also had the honor of throwing out our first pitch tonight. And I, that was OK. Well, let's see. I actually, I think Goldie made me go to the, to the rubber, too. He's like, what? Oh. It was right, a let's, perfect strike. Right, let's try. Let's try that again. <laughs> Fill the iron you horse. You just Mulligan. tell by the release point there that that go. was going to be a good one. Nice. Oh, hey. yeah. Breaker. There right we there. go. Yeah. That was the, that was my changeup too. Yeah. So I didn't. I don't want to. Got a lot of drop on that changeup. <laughs> yeah. Two and one on Hunter Pence. Well, we were asking Smitty about training camp, and I imagine being a veteran player. He, Probably feel the same way about that I did at the end of my career. Let's just get yeah. in there, get it over with, and get the season started. <laughs> yeah, not not too worried about how how you do. Just make sure you get ready. That's more uh, the approach now. And he said he stays in shape chasing his kids around. I imagine you do the same. Yeah, he's got four little ones, and they are little, and they move a lot. <laughs> so uh, we were chasing them while he was talking with you guys. Three and two on Pence. Braden Shipley's retired all four Giants he's faced in relief of Ruby De La Rosa, but Pence gets the one out walk. So you're getting going in about uh, 10, 10 days or so, right? Yeah. Give or take? Ten, yeah, 10 days we'll be back at it. Uh, whatever it is. And here we go again, I guess. So uh, we're excited, really excited. Well, I mean, you've been around. Almost as long as the team has. I've been around, yeah. <laughs> 96, right? Yeah, well, my first year was 95, the year with before. With uh, Winnipeg? With Winnipeg. Yeah. So don't tell too many people that. So, how has the franchise evolved in your timing? Because you've been through it all with this organization. Yeah, it's, it's exciting right now with our young guys. Um, we talk to people around the league, they argue that. We have the best young group of prospects coming, and uh, that's always exciting. Till they're playing, it's 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 always hard, but it's exciting to have them. 
a baseball uh, donor is a game that a lot of it is passed down from veteran players to the young players and I would imagine a lot of the same thing going on in hockey right now with all the young guys you have it, it really it really is important I think and uh, I was fortunate to have some great veteran guys pass it on to me and it's the same thing the, the history and the tradition of our sport is very important. You find the attitude of the young guys has changed as you've gotten a little older. <laughs> you know what? It really it was. You hear that, and it had, and then this last group of last three or four years, our young guys have been incredible. Really? Hmm. And they really made it enjoyable for me to play. I was worried about being the old guy that they kind of wanted to push out of the out of the room, and they just included me. And it sounded funny as a captain to be included, but they included me in everything and made me. And wanted to learn and wanted to ask questions and made a lot of fun. And Braden Shipley looking for a ground ball here, trying to get out of this inning, but he's fallen behind on belt three and one after walking Pence. Todd Walsh and Bob and I have. Campaigned all season long to get rid of the morning skate. <laughs> Have we made any progress on that? I, I, that seems frankly like the dumbest thing in sports. You, I might agree with you on that one. <laughs> oh, over the glove of Segura and into right. Boy, that took a nasty hop on Gene at second. I mean, I can't imagine telling the Diamondbacks, all right, batting practice tomorrow is going to be at 9 in the morning. <laughs> uh, and then first pitch against the Giants going to be 640. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be different. Is there a reason you can discern for that morning skate? It, it started in 72. The Russians came over to North America and the Canadians played the Russians. And in 72, the Canadian team thought that they were going to kill them. And the Russians came out and had some success. And they had morning skates. And so the Canadians were like, well, they're doing it, then we're doing it. And then all of a sudden, Montreal Canadians picked it up. Now we do it today still. <laughs> I wouldn't want my guys resting. I agree. That's a good idea. Especially the veterans. <laughs> yeah, maybe the kids can go for the <laughs> morning skate. Now we've also actually we've seen video of you. You, you may be the one person that's gone into Todd's garage and come out alive. Because <laughs> answer this question for us. There's a giant ball of string in there, isn't there? There is. There's a <laughs> lot of stuff in there. <laughs> I knew it. BB, I knew it. We, yep, you hit it on the head right there. I saw a video of you going in there and dropping off a bunch of Shane Doan uh, garden gnomes, right? Was that it? Yeah, I, I, I try to self promote as much as I can. So. <laughs> You're known for that, sure. <laughs> Me and Goldie. You guys are very similar, actually, now that you mention that. I love that guy. He is such a good man. He would have made a very good hockey player if he hadn't been a Texan. Yeah. He's got huge hands. Every time you shake his hands, I'm always uh, embarrassed for myself. He's such an attention hound, you know. Oh yeah. Me, Always. me, me, all the time. <laughs> look at look what I'm doing. Yep. Can someone please give me more attention? <laughs> oh and two on panic. <laughs> Another one drops in there. Pence is going to come in and score. RBI single for Panic, and it's 4-2. single so far. And one hit right at the feet of Gene Segura got through for a base hit this one just over his reach into right center field. Diamondbacks are very much a station to station team. It's going to take a very well placed hit for any of these guys to take more than 90 feet on a base hit. Nunez drove in their first run with a sacrifice fly in the second. He's got Belt at second base, Panic at first, still just one out and a run in. Who's the best team in the league this year? Ah, I mean, you look at what Pittsburgh did, you probably have to put them up there, but uh, I think Chicago and Anaheim are, they would have been my picks, and along with Washington last year. Those mm -hmm. three teams are, I mean, you, you recognize everybody can beat anybody, but they're pretty good, and they're consistently pretty good.
Other than the obvious things, donor guys staying healthy and schedule working in your favor, but what needs to happen for the Coyotes to have a big year this year? Our young guys that, that took that step, that first step, really need to take the next one, and um, that's a tough one to make because uh, over the years you see guys come and go, and they have those you know, the big first year with the enthusiasm and the energy. And next year, you're not always getting tapped on the back. Well, great job when you score. <laughs> and that's uh, uh, Nunez shoots one by Jury at third. Brandon Belt will come in, and Roberto Kelly will stop Panic at third. And it's an RBI double for Eduardo Nunez in a 4 3 ball game. down that third baseline just out of the reach of Brandon Drury tried a diving attempt there but that ball snuck by him down into the corner. Well Braden Shipley got Crawford to ground out to open up this inning but since four straight have reached Penn swat belt single panic and RBI single. Now Nunez a ribby doubled and suddenly it's a one run D backs lead as Mike Butcher pays a visit. You said you talked it over with your family about the decision to play again this year, but uh, I would imagine that during the course of that conversation, you started to think about when that day does come. And certainly, uh, Coyote fans and we up here in the booth hope that doesn't happen anytime soon. But what are you going to do when you're done? <laughs> you know what? I, there's a, I, I enjoy the game, and to be involved with the game would always be something that I, I've, I've thought about. But I, I, I don't, I don't really know for sure. It's one of those things that I have some ideas that. I enjoy working with the horses. I got a bunch of horses. I enjoy doing that. And, uh, I talk to different guys and they all say the guys that have, 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 have kind of retired and moved on and they all say hey don't say this is what you're going to do just you know see what you like mm -hmm. and uh, and then try to make a way of doing that more often <laughs> well, as long as you've been doing this. I mean talking about more than 20 years now it's a transition. I, I imagine yeah. yeah. You're not going to know the first day. No. I think Baumgartner is a huge. He is a huge team roper. He's came over roped at our place a couple times. Oh, and, yeah. uh, he's a really good team roper too, actually. I don't know if the Giants like him team roping, but <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of that growing up in North Carolina. Yeah. Well, I would suggest you find something other than baseball to pursue <laughs> after your hockey career. Oh, wow. so. Ouch! Ouch! <laughs> wow! That, oh man, I, I it but just I, needs a little practice. That's all. <laughs> all right, I'll accept that advice. I mean, if if Tebow can play, yeah, right. I was going Donor to. can yeah. play. Yeah, I was going to see if they got any teams wanted to come watch. Yeah, we'll hold a little uh, tryout for you. You should. You really should because teams <laughs> will show up. Aaron, apparently they will. Yes, he went. Bob Davidson oh. brings up Baumgartner, and that's the second out. First strike after Braden Shipley. Well, we'll hook something up out of Notre Dame prep, and you can go out there in front of the scouts and show them your stuff. There we go. Well, big out to get right here for Braden. Second and third, two outs. The batters that aren't span. It was. Lined out and flat out, he's 0 for 2. Hitless in his last 22 at bats to Narn Span. I was asking Mike Smith this. We talk a lot about saber metrics in baseball. Yeah. Are, are there hockey saber metrics new? Inside edge type stats for sure drastically have changed in the last probably four years. Um, you've seen it with tip has always had a bunch of his own stats that he keeps outside of the score and it, it's it's really different. They all say that I shouldn't be able to score again though next year so I'm not sure if I like them. <laughs> <laughs> well you had 28 last year. Yeah and they're still trying to figure that out. None of it computed properly for them. <laughs> That's right. Phil Esposito never scored a pretty goal in his life. No. No. Yeah. They all count. That's right. Eventually the puck has to be at the front of the net and if you hang around there something yep. is eventually going to go by you. Braden behind 2 and 0. We got on deck. Well, 
I got to admit to you, one thing I really like is going on YouTube and punching in hockey fights when when you've got the sound, when the guys are standing around the face-off circle. Hey, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> that's that's if you think you can win. It's always it's, you, <laughs> it's, it's a terrible feeling when someone asks you that and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to win this one. Well, you have to say yes, don't you? Well, the one line you can use is my coach wants you on the ice. That's the only oh, line that right. you can use. And, <laughs> Great. So Moss coming in. As Monty makes a nice oh. backhand running grab. Shipley strands two, but the Giants get two, and it's 4 3 on Coyotes night. Always a pleasure to have the great Shane Doan with us. Donor, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, good to see you, Cap. Really appreciate it, guys. All opened up. D-backs lead the Giants 4-3. Greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rest of the National League West. Dodgers five up on the Giants atop the division at the start of play tonight. But L.A. loses at Miami. Jose Fernandez 14 strikeouts in seven innings. And the Dodgers lose 4-1. Just underway. Padres and Rockies. So the Giants. Dodgers haven't lost a whole lot lately. Giants trying to at least to maintain their deficit. Chance to pick up a game here tonight. Things have not gone well lately for San Francisco. They've lost 11 of their last 17. 0 and 2 on Castillo, who flied out his first time up. And thanks to Mike Smith and Shane Doan, all the Coyotes on Coyotes Night here at the ballpark. Always great to have those guys with us. A lot of fun. Yeah, donor uh, used to be a neighbor. We lived in the same area of North Scottsdale there for a while, and uh, he's the one that shamed me into giving away big candy bars on Halloween. You got to do that. Somebody in the neighborhood always raises the stakes, and then you just look bad if you don't keep up. How did that one not hit him? Quick feet. Wellington had to sit out Wednesday's game in L.A. because of tightness in his right trapezius just in the back up by the shoulder. But back in there tonight. Dale Scott with that delayed strike call as Bumgarner drops the slider in there and Wellington is less than thrilled with that strike call. Four strikeouts for Matt Bum. How about that nice running grab by Asmani Tomas to end that last half inning? On a dead sprint straight in, reach down ankle high to make that catch. It's two runs if he doesn't make that grab. Tomas struck out his first time up.
It was a quiet road trip for Yasmani Tomas. Six for 30. He started all eight games. 260 this year with 27 homers. Mad Bum just going backdoor breaking ball after backdoor breaking ball all night long. Dropping him in there and stealing strikes. He's ahead 0 and 2. Tomas fights that one off. You can hear Bumgarner every time he throws a fastball is grunting out there. It's not a Robbie Ray 97 mile an hour fastball by any stretch, but the grunt is the same. Donor coming in here dropping a dime on Madison Bumgarner doing the calf roping out at uh, his place. I bet Brian Sabian, their uh, executive vice president of baseball operations, Joey Amalfitano in the middle there, and Bobby Evans, the general manager of the Giants. I bet they're thrilled to hear that. I think that comes with the territory with Madison Bumgarner. I mean, I know there's always a story about getting his wife a cow or something yeah. for their wedding. For the wedding which present. he says was not necessarily a gift. It just kind of coincided with the wedding. But Bumgarner, apparently, especially in spring training, he's walking around throwing ropes at things, teammates, <laughs> small dogs, whatever you got. Umpires? Yeah, well, that'd be good. Up the middle and into center, a base hit for Yasmani. Fourth hit for the Diamondbacks, a one-out single. Yeah, my favorite Mad Bum story will always be the one when the bus broke down in Denver. It's a good one. The Giants flew in in the middle of the night and landed at Denver International Airport, jumped on two buses to go to the team hotel downtown Denver. And about halfway in, the first bus with the staff and trainers and broadcasters on it broke down. So the player bus pulled over behind it and bus driver opened the back hatch there on the bus and was looking in there had no idea what he was looking at and Mad Bum got off the player bus. Let me see your flashlight. Got in there and started digging around. Hey you got a three eighths inch socket. Yeah I think I do. He fixed the bus. Oh you need a new Johnson rod. <laughs> oh well sure. Your push rod benders rusted. And that ride in from that Denver airport. Uh, that at Denver airport they built that in Saskatchewan. <laughs> Now that's a hole. So you're out there in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. So he really saved their bacon. Yeah, give him a Swiss Army knife and a flashlight, and he'll fix anything. Brandon Drury stays alive. He homered against Bumgarner with two outs in the second inning, his 11th of the year. Looked a little something like this. That was his happy zone throughout the first part of the season. Seemed like every time he got a fastball down and in or one of those breaking balls from a lefty that ended up down and in, he was mashing it hard to left field. Good to see that swing back. Yeah. That's the call from Dale Scott. Another slider. He just keeps sneaking that in there, one after the other against these right hand hitters. And he's got his fifth strikeout. Well, it's just so hard to convince yourself to stay on that pitch. It starts way over in the middle of the left handed batter's box, and then that late break brings it just back to the outside corner that time for a called third strike. And has now struck out three of the last four he's faced, and with two outs here is Mitch Hanniger. Mitch was sent back to Triple A Reno August 26th and now recall that the AC season is over. Got the start tonight in left field, moved over to center when AJ Pollock had to leave with a left groin injury. Kyle Jensen came in after Hanniger moved to center and took over in left field, and Kyle hit a home run off Bumgarner for his first major league hit. Made it 4 1 D backs, it's now 4 3.
Anniger ahead, two balls and a strike. Sky high pop up. Good thing the roof is open. That is way up there for Crawford. And Bumgarner strands the one out single. We are through four. D backs lead the Giants 4 3. The fifth inning and fans arrive early tomorrow to celebrate Los d Hispanic Heritage Day. We celebrate now with a lovely Mike and Vanessa. Uh, that's presented by Bud Light. APS Street Festival will be held outside from 3 to 5 featuring. They're going to have carne asada from Eduelo Canelo. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. A beer garden, live music, inflatables for the kids and a whole lot more. And the first 20,000 fans at the game tomorrow yeah. get the Los D-back soccer jersey courtesy nice. of Pepsi. Like this is a really nice item. Yeah. You guys look good in them. I hope we get to wear them tomorrow. Yeah, during the game. I would think that you would, right? Well, can we just borrow these ones? Uh, do we have clearance for that? <laughs> well, I think we do. All right. Well, you guys, you guys know people. If you don't, Come up to the booth. We'll give you those. All right, sounds good. Because you guys, when you're doing your thing, should be wearing those jerseys tomorrow. I think so. Yeah. I wonder if they come in different sizes. Uh, We're gonna have to find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can get tickets at dbacks.com for the game. I know that. <laughs> Everything we get in the booth is extra large, Vanessa. Yeah. Well. <laughs> hello. I'll just tie it in the back. Right so here. that's that, that's gonna be a long day tomorrow. A great day. Los Dbacks Hispanic Heritage Day, brought to you by Bud Light. APS Street Festival before the game, three to five. And then the game is at 5-10, D-backs and the Giants. And the first 20,000 fans get the Los D-backs soccer jersey. Yeah. Nice job, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you come out and get that carne asada. <laughs> See, you love doing that to me, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Ooh. Oh, the bat is in the giant dugout as Pagan grounds out. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you tomorrow in those jerseys. You know, if you don't get the jerseys, we'll, we'll get you some. Yeah, sure. Oh, they should have some. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys do a great job. The lovely Mike and Vanessa. Buster Posey. Well, there's a lot going on up here tonight. And Mike Smith, Shane Doan, Coyotes Knight, Mike and Vanessa. Giants D backs, Ruby De La Rosa's back. AJ Pollock is hurt again. Braden Shipley's in there. Big night at the ballpark. Kyle Jensen hits his first career home run. What a start. Start of a 10 game homestand. Come on out. DBACS.com slash tickets. Archie Bradley and Johnny Cueto tomorrow. Great pitching matchup. DBACS lead at 4 3. Each team with four hits. Braden Shipley on in his third inning of. Scheduled relief for Ruby De La Rosa, who made his first appearance since May 25th tonight. Two innings, he walked two, struck out three, gave up one hit, a rolling infield swing and runs. Brandon Drury at third. And you can see why third base is Brandon Drury's natural position. He makes those plays look awfully easy. He is very smooth down there. 
shortstop, Brandon Crawford. Accurate throws. Uh, really one of the few times we've seen Brandon set his feet to make a throw at third base. A lot of times he'll just throw on the move. And those are every bit as accurate as the throw he just made. D-backs doing a good job here. Span, Pagan, and Posey, the top three in the order, all 0 for 3. Crawford in the cleanup spot, 0 for 2 so far. He has struck out, grounded out. Crawford's bat has been slow lately, hitting under 230 in his last 16 games. He leads the Giants in RBIs, but his last run batted in came against the Diamondbacks at AT&T Park. That was at the start of the last road trip. Much of his production, Brandon Crawford, came before the All-Star break. He's got just 16 RBIs in the second half of the year. Shipley ahead, one and two. I mentioned the Giants finishing up this long road trip here in Arizona. And for some of the guys, including Brandon Crawford, they're actually home. Brandon Crawford makes his home in Scottsdale. He's sleeping in his own bed here for a couple days this weekend. Two strikes. D-Bax will put the shift on. Drury and Segura just getting set over there. That's one of the nice things about living in the valley in the offseason. It becomes sort of baseball headquarters mm -hmm. between the fall league and cactus league. Everybody will report early next year for the World Baseball Classic. Guys live here in the offseason from so many different teams, not just the Diamondbacks. Three and two now on Crawford. Struck him out. Braden Shipley, two ground balls and a strikeout. He's got a 4 3 lead here, Chase. Four to three. It's time to take a look back at baseball history brought to you by Geico on this day in 2006. Brandon Webb spun a one hitter against the Cardinals in the shortest game ever recorded here at Chase Field. The game clocked in at one hour and 54 minutes, which we're sneaking up on that right now. <laughs> 
Braden Shipley leads off the fifth. Way to go, Webby. Webby, by the way, stopped by to say hello. He's working the game tonight. Pre and post game with Jody. And he popped his head in and said, Here I am. <laughs> Y'all said I never stop it and say hi. Well, here I am. Okay, what do you got? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it was classic Webby. <laughs> but it was great to see him. Shipley strikes out. It, wasn't there another this day in baseball history that was a contender? There was a bunch of good ones today. My one of my personal favorites was in 1977. Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker played their first game together as a double play combination. Whitaker the second baseman, Trammell the shortstop for the Tigers. They went on to play 19 years together, 1,608 games as teammates up the middle for the Tigers. And not in the Hall of Fame, which yeah. is a shame. Yeah. Segura 0 for 2. Another good one in 92. Robin Yount got his 3,000th hit against the Cleveland Indians. And he got his 1,000th hit against the Indians. And he got his 2,000th hit against the Indians. He must have really it's hated amazing. the Indians. And MVPs at both shortstop and center field. Well, Mad Bum's got it going here. Two quick outs. What was the Nolan Ryan? Yeah, that was uh, 1987. Nolan Ryan punched out 16 San Francisco Giants, including 12 of the last 13 in the game. So I had to look it up. Yeah, I was in there. He oh, got me see, twice. now I know why that one didn't make it. All right. 85 pitches for Bumgarner, 57 strikes. Owing singled and scored his last time up. CO's one for two. Crawford Chris Owens continues to hit two for three a two out single Boy, he's barreling him up too. no cheapies just over the glove of Brandon Crawford he kind of got a, had a late jump there I think that ball was hit harder than Crawford realized and it just shot by him into left field for a two out base hit for Chris Owens a chance now for Kyle Jensen who homered off Bumgarner in the third for his first major league hit. A two run homer with two out that followed a Chris Owing single. Diamondbacks two run homers by Drury and Jensen they lead it 4 3. It's our chance Roberts air conditioning and plumbing cool play of the game Kyle Jensen his first big league hit. And that is as cool as it gets right there. At 30 at Reno this year in AAA. And now a big league rookie at the age of 28 after eight years in the minors. Diamondbacks have had nine players whose first major league hit was a home run. Three guys that did it in their first at bat. You got the names? I got uh, John Hester back in 09, Gerardo Parra in 09, and Alex Cabrera in 2000. First at bat resulted in a home run. By the way, on, just in your defense on that Nolan Ryan one, mm -hmm. where he got you twice on this date today, you did Homer off Nolan. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. You oh. were seven for 38 career against Nolan Ryan with one home run. A whole bunch of strikeouts. 14. <laughs> well, there's no shame in striking out against Nolan Ryan. It's a Believe long me. list. It's a long list. And looking back at that game today, I was in the hole every at bat. <laughs> grounded a short on an 0-1 pitch, grounded a short on a 1-2 pitch, struck out on a 1-2 pitch, and struck out on an 0-2 pitch. Get in line. Yeah. Another thing I noticed looking up that game today, Matt Williams was playing third base in that ball game and actually got pinch hit for by Chili Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie coaching at third. Yeah, it was very early on in Maddie's career. Because shortly thereafter, you didn't pinch hit for Maddie anymore. Under any circumstances. Not without his permission. <laughs> well, Bumgarner strikes out Jensen his seven strikeout, but the Diamondbacks through five lead the Giants 4-3.
invite you to participate in Gila River game nights by signing up at one of the interactive kiosks located right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. And I'll tell you what, the young lady that uh, participated in the match game tonight nailed it. Leading off for San she had great clues too. They had all the Coyotes back there. Yeah. Hockey pucks and sticks and pictures of Shane Doan and Mike Smith. Some of the old memory match game thing, mm -hmm. which is always popular here at the ballpark. It's been a lot of fun tonight. And a good ball game. Braden Shipley on in relief of Ruby De La Rosa. Set for his fourth inning of work. He's retired the last five he's faced. And Hunter Pence, who has single walked and scored twice, will lead off the Giant sixth. He broke the bat. Yep. First of three against the Giants starts us off on this 10 game homestand, one of the longest homestands of the year. Archie Bradley and Johnny Cueto tomorrow, a 5 10 start. And then Sunday afternoon, Zach Granke and Matt Moore. Tbacks.com slash tickets. We'll see you down here at the ballpark. Running out of games. After that, it's three against the Rockies, then four against the Dodgers. I'll go on a long road trip to San Diego, Baltimore, and four games in Washington, D.C. before we finish up three at home in the Padres. Fastball missed in, two and two. That's a good place to miss. I've mentioned it earlier. If you're going inside on Hunter Pence, you better get it off the corner inside. He loves that ball from the middle of the plate in. Bounce to change up, but the count is full three and two on Hunter Pence with Brandon Belt on deck. It's been the lower portions of the order that have done the damage for the Giants. Pence is singled and walked. Belt is singled and walked. Panic is singled and walked. And Nunez, the number eight hitter, has two RBIs, a sack fly and a double. Top of the Giants order, one through four. Span, Pagan, Posey, Crawford, all hitless. Aggressive play by CO had a chance there, but the throw pulled Goldie off the bag, and Goldie just had to let it go. Going to be a base hit for Hunter Penson in the air, allowing him to advance on to second base. Belt. We've seen Chris Owings show his range up the middle of the field recently. He just tried to unload that one a little bit too quickly. But in watching that, I can't recall the last time I saw CO make a throw like yeah. that. He's been so good down there lately. So Pence at second to lead off the sixth. He's the tying run. And here's Belt to his walk, singled, and scored a run. Backs have the shift on for Belt. Carved that one foul. Well, we talked about the Giants' struggles in the second half of the season. They've only scored four or more runs in a game, 23 out of 49 times. Wow. 17 and 32 since the All Star break. But the Dodgers have lost 4 1 at Miami, so it's a four and a half game lead for the moment. 0-2. Speaking of foul balls, this happened a couple of batters ago. This is how not to catch a foul ball. Guy in the red shirt. Hang on. Oh, he's oh. over the boards. Oh. He's just fine. <laughs> Got checked over the glass yeah, there. Yeah, he did. On Coyotes night. 0-2 to belt. Fastball inside is ball one. Chris Owings a shortstop on the first base side of second. Segura out there in short right and Drury. The third baseman near the bag with Pence at second and nobody out. 
60 pitches for Shipley, 35 strikes. There's a little dunk shot that drops in. Roberto Kelly going to wave Pence home. The throw from Jensen is cut off, and the game is tied. Well, Bell just fought that one off for an RBI. That's a good way to describe it. He just fought it off. Big curve ball rolling up there. Gets jammed but muscles it out there where nobody's home. You see Chris Owings, the shortstop on the first base side a second. Nobody there. By the time Jensen gets to it, they have no play at Hunter Pence at the plate. Sixth hit for the Giants. It's now a tie ball game. And the batter is Joe Panic, who has walked and he's got an RBI single. Giants fans starting to come to life here. Wellington Castillo, nice scoop back there. Bullpen will start to get busy for the Diamondbacks. With Shipley at 62 pitches, his fourth inning of relief after Ruby De La Rosa went the first two. Oh, I love the fact that Wellington's always looking for the pickoff attempt on those balls in the dirt. That base runner at first base almost always takes an extra step on his secondary lead when he sees the ball in the dirt. And when Wellington picks it cleanly like he did right there, he just snaps a throw down to first base. Well, two guys that have become two of the most trusted in the D-backs bullpen and have been busy on the last road trip will start to get cranked up again. Edward Escobar, the left-hander, and Randall Delgado, the right-hander, in the Sanderson Ford bullpen. These two guys have pitched a lot lately. Two and zero on panic. Spinner to shortstop. Co for one. Segura turns the double play. There you go, Braden. Awfully close at first. They just did get panic. Not supposed to be able to turn a double play on a slowly hit ball like this, but CO gets to it so quickly and unloads to Gene Segura, and there's that shortstop arm from second base. Fires a rocket to Goldie to complete that double play. Giants are taking a look. I think they're going to let that one go the way it is. Yep. So with nobody on and two outs, a run in. Here's Eduardo Nunez, who had a sack fly RBI in the second, and then drove in another run with a double in the fourth. He's now hit safely in six straight. Ace hit. Rolls that one through the hole and into left. That'll bring up Bumgarner, who will take the at bat here in the bottom or the top of the six with two outs. Pitcher Madison Bumgarner. We may lose another base runner here. Nunez grabbing at his right foot as he got down there to first base. Plenty of guys up here, the Giants. Kelby Tomlinson, A. Ray Adrianz would be the first two candidates, and Case Nunez had to come out of the game at third. Connor Gillespie's down on that bench as well for Bruce Bochy. Gillespie's lost most of the playing time down there ever since they acquired Nunez from the Minnesota Twins at the trade deadline. He was limping right from the moment he left the batter's box, pointing to the outside of his right ankle, right foot. He's insisting he's fine. Just give me a minute. You can't wait all night, Eduardo. You know, I know you want to stay in the ball game and everything, but. Been a good year for Nunez. Spent four years with the Yankees in their system. Went to Minnesota and has always had a good bat, but he's never been a great defender. And went to the All-Star game representing the Twins this year. And then shortly after that got traded with the Giants. He really wants to stay in and he insists he's okay. Bill Hayes coaching at first. So Bumgarner will hit, and Nunez stays at first with two down. Up 
Bumgarner struck out once against Ruby and once against Braden Shipley. There's Nunez take off for second base on the first pitch. It would be a Daryl Thomas move. Daryl Thomas, there's a good name. Daryl Thomas used to do that regularly during the course of a baseball season. He'd run out a ground ball and fall on the ground. The trainers would come out and thought he was going to have to be medevaced off the field. <laughs> would talk his way into the game and take off for second base and try to steal on the first pitch. Consistently. Braden behind 2 and 0. Oh. Giants have seven hits all by the five six seven and eight hitters. Pence has two belt has two Nunez has two panic has one. Three and oh. Delgado and Nunez are just about ready it looks like in the D-back bullpen. With Span on deck. How many pitchers get the green light three and oh? <laughs> One. <laughs> One. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There was talk about Madison Bumgarner being in the home run derby this year until the Giants put the kibosh on that. There's Howler back there. On Coyotes night here at Chase Field. And he walked Bumgarner. Second walk issued by Braden Shipley. And now he'll face the leadoff man that aren't span or will he? Here comes Chip Hale. That might be it. Yep, he's going to go with his lefty Edward Escobar. So Braden Shipley couldn't quite finish up his fourth inning of relief for Ruby De La Rosa. And with two on and two out in the sixth, they'll be replaced by Edwin Escobar in a tie game back after this. Diving backs live with the MLB.com at Bat App. You can stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, the whole thing. Just download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or your tablet. New pitcher for the D backs, the lefty Edwin Escobar. On in relief of Braden Shipley, was on in relief of Ruby De La Rosa. And Escobar, very busy on that last road trip, pitched very well. He'll face an orange span. In a tie ball game here in the sixth inning, Giants have two on and two out. Ball one. Edwin appeared in both games in San Francisco, then worked two of three in Colorado, 
and then pitch both Tuesday and Wednesday in Los Angeles. And that big ERA is from his first two appearances for the Diamondbacks, which were starts. But he has been very effective out of the bullpen. Five and a third scoreless innings on that last road trip. And Escobar has been very efficient. He's inherited eight runners coming into the ballgame. None of them have come around to score, which is unusual because the Diamondbacks bullpen has given up 39% of the inherited runners this season. Have come around to score. That's dead last in the National League. The Giants, on the other hand, are first. They only 21% of inherited runners have scored on their bullpen. Span so far 0 for 3. He's flying out three times. Escobar behind two balls and a strike. He's got Nunez at second base and Bumgarner at first. Yeah. The other way. Here comes Jensen. Edwin Escobar once again comes in and puts out the fire. Does a good job. But we're all tied up here. Chase 4-4. Are open. Game of the Giants is tied at four as we start the bottom of the sixth inning. And it's time now for the Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. How about this? Since the middle of last month, the Diamondbacks number one with runners in scoring position. Good. Just got to get some guys on. Yeah, there you go. D backs have an out hit 7 5. We're all tied at four. Diamondbacks with two two run homers. Brandon Drury in the second. And Kyle Jensen in the third. That was Kyle's first major league hit, a two run homer off Bumgarner. He's out there to face Paul Goldschmidt, Wellington Castillo, and Yasmani Tomas, four, five, and six in the Arizona sixth. Goldie has walked, scored a run, and struck out. He's 0 for 1. It's been kind of a quiet second half for Paul. Relatively speaking, of course, five homers in 48 games since the All-Star break. Went six for 29 on the last road trip. As we start tonight, a 10-game homestand, three against the Giants, three against the Rockies, then four against the Dodgers starting on Thursday. Those games against LA a week from tomorrow will be David Peralta bobblehead day. 
Two and two on Goldie. We just uh, actually happen to have, if I can get our director, Phil Malika, Phil the Iron Horse Malika, to get a, the booth camera. Oh, here you go, BB. Get a look at that. So this is an advanced copy of the David Peralta bobblehead. It'll be given out next Saturday against the Dodgers on the 17th. That's a great looking bobblehead. Yeah. But that, that pose where he leans back, puts his left hand up to his mouth. It's authentic. First 20,000 fans get the David Peralta bobblehead. First of Ram Truck. That's coming up September 17th, a week from tomorrow, against the Dodgers. This is uh, the first copy that we have here. So get your tickets at dbacks.com for that. Goldie strikes out for the second time. Now eight strikeouts for Madbone. And here's Castillo, who struck out his last time up. That's the last bobblehead of the year. We haven't even given those out yet, and I bet Todd has one in his garage. It's probably broken too. <laughs> and for sale. And for sale. Yeah. I'm glad the donor confirmed there's a giant ball of string in there. Mm -hmm. well, why would donor lie? You know, he's, he's been there. He's the team captain. Yeah. He's the only person that we know that actually went into Todd's garage and came out. Maybe that explains his goal scoring and fight starting last year. <laughs> he was a little antsy. Yeah. Get, what did he have? <laughs> 97, 98 penalty minutes. You know why? Every time he closes his eyes, he sees the big ball of string. Coyotes night here at the ballpark. Howler is here. Hanging out with Baxter. Hundred pitches for Bumgarner, sixty-six for Stripes, three and one on Castillo. Bumgarner so far has walked one, struck out eight. That's Monty Tomas, a base hit his last time up. He'll be next. Yes, Monty's got a single tonight, made a nice. Running catch in right field to strand two base runners. That's in there for a strike on the fastball. That's number nine. He's now struck out three in a row. Another fan for Dale Scott's strike zone. You know, there have been a lot of them that have not been in the strike zone, but this one looks pretty good. Right there. Madison Bumgarner's now gone over the 200 inning mark this season. He needed six and a third to get to an even 200, and now he's at six and two thirds, or five and two thirds rather. Never mind, he's got another inning to go. He's <laughs> got five strikeouts looking, by the way. That tells you anything. Tomas just over the head of Matt Williams, and there's Terry Fairplay Finley ranging way out there to left. Go get it, Terry. Look at the range. Terry, our golden glover down the left field line tonight. Nicely done. Good speed. Allen Bam Bam Bayham working the right field corner. Oh, and two. Um, Garner a chance to strike out the side in order here. Hit for Tomas. He's two for three, a two out single. And a chance for Drury, who homered against Mad Bum in the second. Third base, bullpen. It's crowded down there. We'll start to get busy. The veteran George Contos, the right hander. Bumgarner and 105 pitches. Murray is homered and struck out one for two.
Big cut at that fastball, but it's 0 1. Brandon's playing time now that the rosters have expanded here in September. Been a little sporadic lately. He's in there at third tonight against the left hander. Played in just one of the two games in San Francisco. Sat out a game at Colorado and sat out two of the games at Dodger Stadium. But despite that sporadic playing time, he's swung a very good bat lately, last two weeks or so. Hitting about 360 in his last dozen games. That one missed, and it's two balls and a strike. I mean, we've seen uh, what settling in at his natural position has done for Chris Owens. Yeah. Offensively, he has become a different animal since he's played shortstop on an everyday basis and didn't have to worry about playing defense out in center field. It makes you wonder if Brandon Drury wouldn't fall into that same class if you just put him in there at third base or second base positions that he's very comfortable at and let him roll. Especially when he's trying to play outfield, as we saw him learn to do the day before the season started when AJ first got hurt. But Chip Hale has talked about that before and said if Brandon is going to be a Diamondback and he's going to play every day, they have to find a position for him. And there's no telling how much his progress this year has been slowed a bit by having to worry about four different positions defensively, two of which he'd never played before. There's a drive out to Hunter Pence in right field. Um Garner strands the two out single. We are all tied through six at Chase Field. The seventh inning. Hey, fans, when the D backs win, you, you win at Papa John's a day after every Diamondbacks win. You get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's and our promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. Seventh inning at Chase Field, 4 4 ball game. Giants and Diamondbacks. Edwin Escobar back out there. They'll flip Angel Pagan around to bat right handed. Pagan, Posey, Crawford, 2 3 and 4 in the Giants' seventh. Randall Delgado still throwing in the Diamondback bullpen. Escobar came on to get Denard Span to fly out to win the sixth. Pagan so far 0 for 3. With Pagan right now on this Giants road trip, which started with Ford Wrigley. Went to Colorado for three. Now the first of three here, but so far he is one for 28 on their road trip. Quick pitch. Mm -hmm. That's been an effective weapon for Edwin lately. Well, he's worked a dozen games since his latest minor league recall. 12 and a third innings of relief. 
And his ERA in those last 12 and a third is 146. He's been really good. Pitched exclusively as a starter in the minor leagues at Reno for Phil Nevin. 16 starts. He went six and three with a 4-2-5 ERA. Well, it's no secret that the Diamondbacks are auditioning for next year's bullpen. Not sure if that's where Escobar will end up. He might end up in the rotation next year for all we know, but. Oh, Pagan's going to give the Giants the lead. There it goes. Angel Pagan, that's number 10, and it's 5 4 San Francisco. One for 28 on the road trip, but there goes number 10. Actually caught that ball off the end of the bat. Big breaking ball that ended up right in the middle of the strike zone. Looked like he hit it out toward the end of the bat just a little bit, but hit it in a good spot to get it out of here. And with Buster Posey coming up, Chip Hale will bring in Randall Delgado. We'll take a break with the Diamondbacks now trail the Giants 5-4. Six appearances for Randall, his most ever in a season, and a 4-1-4 ERA. Coming off a pair of very good outings Tuesday and Wednesday in Los Angeles, two scoreless innings. And work to Buster Posey following the Pagan homer off Edwin Escobar. There's a left-hander due up next, Brandon Crawford, and the lefty Steve Hathaway is busy in the Diamondback bullpen. So we'll see if this is a one and done for Delgado. Randall has given up only two earned runs in his last 18 appearances. 14 strikeouts in 13 and two third innings. Posey tonight has struck out and twice grounded out 0 for 3. Buster Posey 153 at bats since his last home run July 16th. Two fastball missed. Going for Delgado, his 67th appearance of the season uh, puts him into a fourth place tie for most games pitched in the National League this year. Brandon Drury at third. Nice high hop, perfect throw. That's the first out of the seventh. Here comes Crawford. And we'll see what Chip wants to do with Hathaway, who's ready down there in the bullpen. Shortstop, Brandon Crawford. Crawford is 0 for 3 tonight. He has struck out twice. He might have Hathaway just up for belts in panic 6 and 7 back to back lefties. 
Delgado will pitch to Crawford. Sky high, very short left center. Owings is calling for it. Two outs. Crawford 0 for 4, and that'll bring up Hunter Pence, who has singled twice, walked, and scored three times. Right fielder, Hunter Pence. Pence has really eaten up, had a three hit game Wednesday at Colorado. Giants had yesterday off. Ten homers on the year. He's got two home runs this month. Fastball is ball one. Diamondbacks will have Mitch Hanniger, the pitcher spot, and Gene Segura do up bottom seven, eight, nine, and one. Giants led it one nothing on an Eduardo Nunez sacrifice fly in the top of the second. d backs got two back on a Brandon Drury two run homer. And led it 4 1 after Kyle Jensen hit a two run home run his first major league hit. d backs had a 4 1 lead but the Giants got two in the top of the fourth. RBIs by Panic and Nunez. One in the sixth on a Brandon Belt RBI. Now one here in the seventh on the Pagan Homer. It's a foul ball. Book out three and two. That's headed for the left field corner. Hunter Pence pulls in a second with his 18th double, his third hit tonight. It's not always pretty, but it's one of the more effective swings in Major League Baseball. Waited on a changeup from Delgado that time. Man, to keep it fair down into that left field corner. And now with Brandon Belt coming up and Joe Panic behind him, a couple of left hand hitters, Chip Hale will indeed go get Steve Hathaway, the rookie lefty, and try and strand Pence at second. Back from Chase Field after this, D backs trail at 5 4.
on for his 16th appearance, trying to strand Hunter Pence at second base and keep it a 5-4 ball game. See back up for the Miners appear Tuesday at Dodger Stadium. He's been one of the Diamondbacks' busiest pitchers. Certainly he was in August. 13 appearances last month, pitched to an ERA right at three. Most of that big 5-5-9 ERA came from a rough major league debut at Dodger Stadium. But it worked to Brandon Belt, who has walked single twice. He's got an RBI, he scored a run. Bell can't check. Good curveball from Hathaway, and it's 0 and 1. Steve Hathaway. No balls and two strikes. It's been a relatively slow summer for Brandon Belt at the plate. He's hit just 226 since July the 1st. Dale Scott rings him up. Steve Hathaway comes in. Three pitches, three strikes. And he punches out Belts. Will stretch and chase field. d down one. Coyotes night here at Chase Field. AD backs fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device. Just use the all-new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app and take Fox Sports Arizona. And D-Backs baseball with you wherever you go. Madison Bumgarner's night is over. New pitcher for the Giants, the right-hander George Contos. And they'll face Mitch Handiger to lead off the bottom of the seventh on Coyotes night here at Chase. So Mad Bum finishes the evening with 199 and two thirds innings on the season. Well, they got a lot of faith in Contos, and the numbers show why. 52nd appearance, a 2-4-2 ERA. He's been very good lately. And a girl for two so far. Contos, in his last 21 appearances, in fact, has put up an ERA of 1-5-2. Pitcher spot due up next, and Chris Herman, the Hermanator, is in the on deck circle. He got the start behind the plate the other night at Dodger Stadium. His first game in almost two months. On 
One and two on Mitch Hanniger. Will Smith, the left-hander, acquired from Milwaukee. Ready in a giant bullpen. With the left hand hitting Herman on deck. So that's, uh, let's see, seven pitchers used in the ball game so far between the two teams. Two and two. Good job by Steve Hathaway to get Brandon Belt on three pitches to win that seventh. And so they do it at Franklin Pierce. Haniger skies one very shallow right center panic backing up. And he's calling for it. One away. Chris Herman was out for a long time. He missed nearly 50 games that right hamstring strain. Pitching for Steve Hathaway, number 10, Chris Herman. Chris got the start behind the plate Wednesday in Los Angeles, went over three with a walk. 284 on the year with six homers. So Will Smith stays put in the giant bullpen and Contos will work to Herman. Herman hitting for the pitcher. Looks like Jake Barrett and Zach Godley will start to throw in the Diamondback bullpen. We were talking about Bob earlier about how the Diamondbacks this season have never had everybody clicking all at once and it seems like every point in the year there was one guy who was carrying the offense. Well boy it was Chris Herman for a while. Yeah it really was. He was as hot as you can get to the point where Chip was just trying to find places to play him. He started a game in center field started a game in right field. We were calling him Babe Herman. I mean he was hitting everything. That was back in May. How about Dale Scott strike zone? Wow. How are we looking? Boy. It, it, it takes a lot of guts to take a pitch with Dale Scott back there. You just never know. Now this is called a ball. Three and one. There is Herman. He backs out the tying run aboard with one out in the seventh for the National League hits leader, Gene Segura. Second baseman, Gene Segura. Although Daniel Murphy had at least one hit, we know that for the Nationals, so Gene is now a second in the league in hits. Washington beat the Phillies 5-4. Trey Turner, your boy, had a walk-off. Telling you. National League most valuable player. He's at least on my beat the streak team. <laughs> now up to 21. Segura 0 for 3. Came into the ball game fourth in the National League and hitting at 316. Now he's at 314. Dodgers lost at Miami tonight. 
Marlins beat him in Marlins Park 4 to 1. Clayton Kershaw against Jose Fernandez in that game. Fernandez struck out, I think it was 14. Yeah. So the Giants right now, four and a half back in the NL West. Rockies are leading at San Diego, 2 1 now in the seventh inning at Petco Park. Chatwood and Perdomo. So Perdomo pitching well again for San Diego. Lifted in the air, right field for Pence. Two outs. Well, Chris Owings continues to swing the bat. Two for three, couple of singles. He has scored a run tonight. CO is hit safely now in seven straight games and nine of his last ten. See if he can find a gap somewhere and maybe get Chris Herman in with a tying run all the way from first and two outs. We talked about Chris Owings taking off offensively when he moved into shortstop on a full time basis. In 48 games as a shortstop, he's a 318 hitter. In 49 games as an outfielder, he was a 267 hitter. Speaks to the idea that you're trying to learn a new defensive position and expect it not to impact your hitting. Talking about that with Brandon Drury earlier in the ball game. There goes Chris Herman. That catcher's speed, and he is. Oh no! Whoa! It sure looked like he beat the throw. Gabe Morales, the umpire, says no. Chris Herman shaking out that left hand. Might have caught a finger on the bag on that head first slide right there. It looked from here like he beat the throw easily. He got a very good jump. Yeah, Buster, we're going to challenge that. Yeah, it all when the tag is applied on the shoulders of a guy sliding head first, it always looks like they're safe. Ladies and, and gentlemen, as we've come to learn this year, that's not always the case. The call it used to be you had to get that glove down in front of the bag before the runner got there if you wanted to have any chance to get him out. But now you just get the tag down on any body part before the hand gets on the bag. Now these are synced up. These are exactly to the same second. And is in. Tag is not applied, right? Now you can see. Chris wins immediately as that left hand got in there. Well, I'm trying to get the tying run in the scoring position. Already with two outs in the inning. Poses had himself a nice year behind the plate throwing out attempted base dealers. He's gunned down 33% on the season, which is right about league average. You see Dale Scott, the crew chief of the plate umpire on the right there. Gabe Morales, the second base ump who made the call on the left. Take a good long look in New York. Rockies have now taken a 4 1 lead at San Diego. They're in the seventh inning at Petco Park. Colorado comes in for three games starting on Monday. And we still have six more to play this year against the Padres. Three in San Diego, then we finish up the season with three against the Padres here at Chase Field. It is safe at second. The call is overturned. The Diamondbacks win the challenge. 
Chris Herman will not return. The call has been overturned. And now they'll get soccer team's Brito's speed in there at second. He's the tying run with two outs. Chris Herman at second base, number 30, soccer team's Brito. Take a look at it. Yeah, left hand just kind of jammed into the dirt and stopped. Looked like he almost supported the entire weight of his body on his left wrist there for a moment. We just got Chris Herman healthy again coming off that hamstring. So Brito will run. He's at second, two outs, and a 1 0 count on Herman. Or uh, Owings, pardon. Chris already with two hits tonight. Right guy at the right time, Chris Owings, 11 for his last 16 with runners in scoring position. <laughs> How are we looking? <laughs> the funny thing about Chris Owings, it seems like he's played here for 10 years. He just turned 25 last month. Number one pick out of high school in Gilbert, South Carolina. That was back in 2009. Fly ball center field that backs up Span still back up. He's at the track and it's off the ground. Brito will score and Owens is on the run. He's got a chance to come in. Matt Williams waving him home. Here's the throw from Crawford and he is out of there. Bernard Spann got himself all spun around out there and just clanked it. The Diamondbacks tie it up as Brito comes in. Owings is thrown out on a relay by Crawford. It's 5-5. The Diamondbacks tie it. He ate the air on Denard Span. Boy, he got really turned around there. Chris Owings hit that ball a lot harder than Span thought. And as he's stumbling on the warning track and hit off the heel of the glove, this was the attempt by Chris Owings. Well, that's a nice play by Buster Posey on a tough short hop from Brandon Crawford, but they get him at the plate. The O can really run. Two outs. Matty sends him home. That would have given the Diamondbacks the lead, but he's out by a step and a half. Second base. Really looked like he had a good chance to score there, too. Well, took a great throw by Crawford and a great pick at home plate by Buster Posey to get that out. So here we go. 5-5, five, five, top eight now. Joe Panic is the hitter. Jake Barrett, the ERA down under four for Jake, his 62nd appearance of the year. And there's strike one to Panic, who has walked and single. He's also hit into a double play. You don't expect a veteran center fielder like Denard Spann to play a ball like that. That was really misplayed. 
It doesn't appear that the flags are moving at all. Occasionally we'll get some wind inside the ballpark with the roof and panels open, but I don't think that was a factor at all. I think Chris just hit that ball a lot harder than Span expected. So we got a tie game and tacos. One and two on panic. Jake Barrett has really been effective lately after a rough patch in the middle of last month. He worked Tuesday and Wednesday at Dodger Stadium. Both times he came in and got critical double play balls to end innings. Last six appearances, Jake has worked five and two third innings and given up just one hit. The head of Joe Panic one and two. It'll be Panic Nunez in the pitcher spot. Seven eight nine for the Giants. Jammed him. Owens behind second. Nunez, the third baseman, has had a good night. He drove in the Giants' first run with a sacrifice fly in the second. Had an RBI double in the fourth and singled his last time up. Pitcher spot up next. Connor Gillespie is in the on deck circle for San Francisco. He will hit for Contos. Good slider from Barrett in its own one. So the Diamondbacks in the bottom of the seventh able to get the tying run across without the benefit of a base hit. Chris Herman walked with one out as a pinch hitter, stole second, and came in on the span error to tie the game. Fastball is ball one, one and two on Nunez. Nunez has hit safely in six straight, had a home run in their win Tuesday at Coors Field. He's got 15 home runs this year. Dunks that one into foul ground, first base side, and it stays one and two. Diamondbacks have lost 12 of their last 13 series against the Giants here at Chase Field. D backs only 11 and 30 versus San Francisco during that stretch. Time to reverse that trend. One and two on Nunez. Fastball missed in, two balls and two strikes. Yeah, no team in baseball has a better record at an away stadium than the Giants here at Chase Field since the beginning of the 2013 season. They're 26 and 9 in this ballpark. Hard to win divisions like that, considering the struggles the D-backs have had against the Dodgers and the Giants as Barrett gets Nunez to chase for his first strikeout. Good hard slider off that outside corner. Jake Barrett appears to have that ball going downhill a lot better now. You mentioned he had a little bit of a rough streak there for a while, was leaving pitches up in the zone, getting hit hard, but starting to really drive it down there at the bottom of the zone. Well, Connor Gillespie was in the on deck circle ready to hit for Contos, but instead it will be Jared Parker, and that means a pinch hitter, followed by a mound visit from Mike Butcher. Parker announced as the hitter with two outs in the game. Got to be careful with Parker. He's got good power. 16 home runs playing in the Coast League at AAA this year. Five with the Giants. It's a long meeting. 
Butch are putting those teal shoes to work. <laughs> those things look good. So Barrett and Parker with two outs. Parker 244 in five home runs. Just 10 at bat since his last minor league recall. He spent all of August at Triple A Sacramento. Fastball is ball one. Parker, a second round pick by the Giants six years ago out of the University of Virginia, which produced Phil Gosselin. Good slider from Barrett, and it's one and one. <laughs> Imagine, uh, Parker in that batter's box uh, reminds me of a minor league hitting coach one time that said a guy was itchy in the batter's box. I wasn't quite sure what he meant until I saw the guy. It looked a lot like Parker. Everything's always moving, arms moving, he shrugs his shoulders, he drops his shoulders. Well, he's got that back elbow twitching too. Trying to fastball away after the slider, but it's two and one. Watch Parker's back elbow. Well, he does that thing where he looks out at the barrel of his bat. And as a catcher, you, you don't want to start giving the signs until he gets that out of the way. He'll, he'll look right at it right there. And then pick up the pitcher again. And you have to wait until he's done doing that. You don't want him to peek back there and see where you're set up or what sign you're calling. He's got kind of a baby Joe Morgan thing yeah. going too. A little bit of the chicken wing. Yeah. There's not one body part that's still up there. <laughs> Looks like he's trying to get a better cell phone signal or something. <laughs> Piled off and it's three and two. Struck him out. Another good slider from Jake Barrett, who gets two strikeouts and a 1 2 3 8. D backs and Giants tied at five.
Jody Jackson alongside Brandon Webb as we get set for DVAX Live presented by CenturyLink, our post-game show. Game all knotted up on an exciting play that we saw and Socrates Brito scoring that run. But you know what? We're going to talk in the post-game about Ruby De La Rosa. What were your thoughts as he returned to the mound? Yeah, it looked good, you know, especially having a, a long period of time off. He looked good, had 43 pitches, um, and, uh, you know, it's exciting for him on forward. All right, we'll also get reaction to A.J. Pollock leaving this game with a groin injury. Again, all knotted at five, guys. Thank you, guys. You see our Gila River game summary, Kyle Jensen, who had a two-run home run in the third off Madison Bumgarner for his first major league hit, leads off the eighth against Sergio Romo, who has been really effective lately after spending so much time on the disabled list this year with a flexor strain in his pitching arm. Romo. In his last 17 appearances has an ERA that starts with zero so he's been very good. And usually when Romo's good his slider is good and you'll see him throw it a lot. Just like that one and two on Jensen. You heard Jody mentioned A.J. Pollock had to leave the ball game. He started in center field flied out to center to end the bottom of the first but injured his left groin. Rounding first base in a deep fly ball. So Mitch Hanniger moved from left field over to center to replace Pollock and Kyle Jensen checked in and left and. When he got up for his first at bat he had a home run off Matt Bone. D-backs led it 4 1. And Jensen strikes out 5 5 in the eighth. Goldie has walked, scored a run, and struck out twice. He's 0 for 2. Slider is in there and it's one and one on Goldie. You know, Sergio Romo in 34 career games leading up to tonight has pitched a total of 30 and a third innings here at Chase Field and given up or actually has an ERA of one. <laughs> That's the Sergio Romo fastball. And Dale Scott says strike two. Boy, oh boy. Up the middle. Romo tried to make the kick save. But Goldie is ahead as the go ahead run. He's on the first base with one out. What's next brought to you by CenturyLink? Our final visit from the Giants this year. Two more coming up Saturday and Sunday. And a good pitching matchup tomorrow night. Johnny Cueto and Archie Bradley. Watch Johnny Cueto pitch or come watch Johnny Cueto and learn some new dance moves. Uh, if you've never seen Johnny Cueto pitch in person, you really should get down here tomorrow night. Dbacks.com slash tickets. It's a lot of fun. Time for some beef Wellington. Go ahead, run it first with a one out in the game. Castillo 0 for 3 has struck out twice. Wellington 24 RBIs in his last 18 games. Able to check his swing on that slider. When you've seen a guy Bob as much as the D backs have seen Romo who basically throws one pitch. How is he able to stay effective. I mean, he just never leaves it in the middle of the plate. It's either on that outside corner breaking out of the zone or right at a right handed hitter breaking across the inside part of the plate. And just about the time you tell yourself OK I'm going to sit on a slider pop a fastball in there and catch you looking like he did to Jensen. Behind on Castillo 2 and 0. Daniel 
Hudson has started throwing in the Diamondback bullpen with a go ahead run on base and one out. There's the rare Romo changeup. There's Huddy, Carvin also the bullpen coach. Spinner and it's two and two. A Romo slider. Sergio Romo is probably the closest thing this generation has to Larry Anderson, the human slider. <laughs> now broadcasting games for the Philadelphia Phillies, but throughout his playing career, that's all he threw. One slider after another after another with great control. Red Sox bought in on that. They traded Jeff Bagwell to get him. Ouch. That one didn't work out so much. McKay coaching in first. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Change up missed, and it's three and two. Below the strike zone. Foley holds it first. Wellington yanks that one foul just over the head of Matt Williams at third. And we'll do it again on three balls and two strikes. Play. And the Diamondbacks are able to get the go ahead run into second with two outs. Well, that could turn out to be a huge play. He just lost the handle right there, has the wherewithal to stay with it and get the out at first base, so no error will be charged. But that appeared to be an easy double play ball. Eduardo Nunez, when he was playing shortstop for the Yankees, was a horror show defensively. He's always been a good offensive player. He's been much better defensively at third than he was at short. But that's the kind of thing that the Yankees used to see all the time from him. Make it hurt. Well, it's a big spot for Yasmani Tomas. Goal to get second. Tie game in the eighth. Two outs. Tomas two for three, a pair of singles. Yes, he went. Bob Davidson at first. This will be a tricky test for Yasmani, who we've watched vastly improve his plate discipline and pitch recognition up there, but he's going to get one frisbee after another from Romo.
Bennett just shy of the warning track. Lamas was on that one, but it's out number three. Still tied as we head to the ninth. Field, Giants and D-backs, the opener of a 10-game homestand, first of three with San Francisco, our final go-round with the Giants this year. Tie game at home in the ninth inning, so here's the closer, Daniel Hudson. For the D-backs, now pitching. Already got his second save of the season in the opening game on the last road trip. That was against these Giants in San Francisco. A scoreless ninth inning with two strikeouts last Saturday in the win over the Coors, uh, Coors Field over the Rockies. A bit of a bumpy nine Sunday versus Colorado. He did not pitch in the L.A. series. And so he's well rested coming into this one. And he'll face an art span, the leadoff man to lead off the ninth. Span, Pagan, Posey in the giant ninth. That aren't span 0 for 4. He has flied out four times. So he is hitless now in his last 24 at bats. Dodgers have lost at Miami 4 1. Jose Fernandez beat Clayton Kershaw. Giants are four and a half back for the moment. Rockies lead at San Diego 4 1. They're in the eighth at Petco Park. One and one on span. Really good down here at third. He is very much at home. Very little wasted time as he has to go to his left to get this little chopper. Scoop and throw all in one motion. Man, that's a nice play. Pagan homered his last time up, his 10th of the year. That was batting right handed against Edwin Escobar. He hit it just over the D backs bullpen. It snapped a one for 28 skid for Pagan, and there's strike one. So Pagan has got 10 home runs this year, five from each side of the plate. Hard to first, Goldie dives, gets it. Honey got to get over there. Nicely done by the Diamondback infield. Two outs. A 
this diving play by Goldie, but what really makes the play is Daniel Hudson getting yeah, off sure. that mound Goldie. quickly. Goldie hits him right there. Easy out at first base. Boy, any delay at all with Pagan speed, he might leg that out. Buster Posey 0 for 4 tonight. Top four hitters in the Giants lineup have combined for one hit. That was the Pagan homer in the seventh inning. Crawford on deck. He's hitless tonight. However, the bottom of the Giants order, five through eight, is a combined eight for 12 with three walks and four runs driven in in the game. Posey right now is sitting in a four for 30 skid. Went to the slider and it's ball two. Back live post game show. Brandon Webb and Jody Jackson coming up after our ball game. Webb will break down Ruby De La Rosa's start tonight. Ruby went two innings. His first appearance for the Diamondbacks since May 25th. Gave up just one hit a single and two walks and three strikeouts. Two and two on Buster Posey. Hudson when he last pitched Sunday at Colorado things got a little dicey in the ninth inning gave up a run on three hits but closed out that ball game with big strikeouts of DJ LeMahieu and Carlos Gonzalez trying to close out this ninth right by Roberto Kelly Got him. Honey humped it up 97. He blows away Posey, who loses the bat. Bottom nine coming up.
That's how he tied it up. Chris Owings, a deep fly ball to center. Denard Spann planks it. Brito scored the tying run. Owings waved all the way in, and they cut him down at the plate on the relay by Crawford. And that's our Cox Gig Life high speed highlights. That would have been the go ahead run. How about the way that top of the ninth ended for the plate umpire, Dale Scott? Buster Posey checking in. You see Dale Scott flexing his arm right there. Look at what happened on the strikeout by Daniel Hudson. Right on the arm. Ooh. Ryan DePanfilo, the Diamondback trainer, came out to have a look, and Dale Scott insisted he was fine. But that looked like it hurt. New pitcher for the Giants, the hard throwing right hander, Hunter Strickland. Brandon Drury, who homered in the second, leads it off. Brandon's authored a couple of walk offs this year. The numbers on Strickland 277 ERA is 66th appearance. Seven scoreless innings over his last nine outings. And he's quickly ahead of Brandon Drury 0 and 2 with a 99 mile an hour fastball. Drury, Hanniger in the pitcher's spot, 7 8 9 in the D back ninth. And Strickland blows away Drury. Center fielder. Mitch Hanniger 0 for 3. Ricky Weeks Jr. makes his way out into the on deck circle. So Ricky would hit for Daniel Hudson. Zach Godley has started warming up in the D backs bullpen. Diamondbacks have already used seven pitchers today. Ruby De La Russa started, went two innings, just about as scheduled. Since then, Braden Shipley, we've seen Escobar, Delgado, Hathaway, Barrett, and Hudson. Strickland is the fourth pitcher of the night for the Giants. Anagar, who always has a very polished approach up there, is ahead 3 0. Takes all the way, and there's the strike. This guy never looks like he's over his skis up there at the plate. Takes a crack at the 3 1, shoots it the other way. Pence on the run. What a catch! Hunter Pence, unbelievable. Mitch Hanniger standing at third. He thinks he's got a triple. Well, nope. Matt Williams saying, stay right there. Let's have a look. Sliding into the bullpen fence, Hunter Pence. Ball stayed in the glove the entire time. I think the Diamondbacks were hoping that at some point that ball snuck out the webbing of the glove, but clearly see Pence had it the whole way. Nicely done. It's a lot of wants right there. Ricky Weeks Jr. 246 and nine home runs. Ricky has a pinch hitter this year, 62 plate appearances. He's hit 176.
breaking ball is strike one and it's one and one on weeks junior. There's a right hand hitter who could turn on a Hunter Strickland fastball. It's Ricky Weeks Jr. Mm -hmm. If he gets a fastball. Yeah. <laughs> Another breaking ball, and it's two and one. You can look at the pitch charts for opposing pitchers, and you might have a guy out there on the mound that throws his breaking ball 2% of the time. But if Ricky Weeks is at the plate, he's going to throw all breaking balls. It just seems to be the way that teams attack him. They've seen the bat speed. Lays off that fastball and is three and one. Strickland trying to get him to chase. Aboard with two outs for Gene Segura. Good at bat by Ricky Weeks Jr. Second baseman, Gene Segura. Segura 0 for 4. Strickland curveball, one and one. Got behind in the count, went to a breaking ball. Don't see that a lot from guys who throw 99. Back with a fastball, and it's one and two. Second for Panic. And Strickland strands the two out walk. will play extras at Chase Field to open up this long homestand. D backs and Giants are tied at five.
Live as we head to the 10th. Extra innings are presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild sign. Feed it. Eighth pitcher tonight for the Diamondbacks is Zach Godley, four and three with a 6-4-6 six, six ERA. Zach has made a pair of relief appearances since his latest move to the bullpen. He came on to start the sixth inning Monday in L.A. Walked the first two batters he faced and then settled down and retired the next six. Brandon Crawford leads off the giant tenth. He's 0 for 4. Nine games as a starting pitcher for Zach Godley. This will be his tenth relief appearance. Well, let's make it a 10th Avenue freeze out. I like it. Talking about the 10th. Got Noah Berlin. He was ready. Diamondbacks this year have done a good job on Brandon Crawford. 0 for 4 tonight. He struck out twice. He's hitting only about 230 versus the D-backs this year. But Godley behind three balls and a strike. the leadoff man again. This is what happened to Zach in L.A. on Monday. But you don't want to have to face Hunter Pence with a go-ahead run on base because Pence has had an enormous night. Right fielder Hunter Pence. He's been up four times. Two singles, a double, and a walk. He scored three times, and he may have saved the ball game with a sliding catch into the bullpen fence out there in the right field corner in the last half inning. Took away at least a double from Mitch Hanniger. Brandon Crawford. Yes, he went, Bob Davidson. A perfect six for six in his stolen base attempts. Something you don't often see. Oh, goodness. I thought that earlier in the ball game when Ruby De La Rosa was still in there, he snapped a couple of throws over to first base. And Ruby was a guy that used to lob his pickoff oh, throws man. to first. Crawford's back in time, one and two. I think that was. A yeah, foul ball in the dirt that time. I think Wellington picked it cleanly out of the dirt and just flipped the throw down there to Goldie. Back 
Patrick Corbett and Enrique Burgos suddenly start warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. Another base hit for Pence. His fourth hit tonight. Crawford's flying into third. Roberto Kelly will stop him there. A double for Pence. Four hits and a walk. First baseman, Brandon Belt. The breaking ball just catches too much plate in a two strike count. Kind of hung over the inside part, and Pence finds that hole in the left side, drives it all the way down to that left field corner for a double. The hitter is Brandon Belt. Who has walked and singled twice? He's got an RBI. He scored a run. First base is open. You're going to put him on. And the Giants will have the bases full with nobody out for Joe Panic. You've got the lefty Corbin warming up. Chip Hale has already used his short relievers from the left hand side, and Escobar and Hathaway. So Godley comes in, walk double intentional walk. And the bases are full of Giants with nobody out. Panic walked in the second, had an RBI single in the fourth. He's one for three. Here comes Chip. Patrick Corbin who inherits a bases loaded no out mess tie game in the tenth back in a moment. game for the Diamondbacks tonight is the left-hander Patrick Corbin his last six appearances have all been in relief all but one of them have been multiple innings and a couple of scoreless outings then went a full week without even appearing in a game gave up two runs two hits and two innings Sunday at Colorado including a home run well, hopefully Patrick can do what he needs to do here to get out of this jam the nine pitchers used one short of a franchise record they used ten in an extra inning game against the Rockies back in the 06 season. Giants have the bases full and no outs for Joe Panic, who has walked in single tonight. Joe Panic won for five lifetime against Patrick Corbin. The last two times he faced him, he hit into double plays. Crawford, Pence, and Belt, the Giants runners, third to first. Infield comes in for the Diamondbacks. Starts him off with a slider for ball one. Enrique.
Enrique Burgos continues to throw in the D backs bullpen. You've got the right hand hitting Eduardo Nunez on deck. Checks his swing and it's 2 0. Back to back sliders from Patrick. Fastball is strike one. Started the ball game, his first appearance for the D back since May 25th, went two innings. Gave up a run, walked two, struck out three, threw 43 pitches. Braden Shipley worked three and two third in relief, and since then, it's just been a wave of D backs relievers. Full count on panic. We've seen Escobar, Delgado, Hathaway, Barrett, Hudson, Godley, now Corbin. Nine pitchers for the D backs, four for the Giants. Three and two to Joe Panic. Segura's got it, coming home. They get one, and that's it. The force on Crawford, the first out here in the 10th. Play right there, keeping that ball in the infield. Keeps the double play in order here, getting the force out at home play. Just not enough time for Welly to regroup and throw on to first base and attempt the double play, especially with Brandon Crawford sliding into his heels there as he tried to make the play. But now, double play in order. Chip Hale wants to talk to Dale Scott. Chip was on the top step for a long time looking back as if Alan Campbell the video coordinator had been looking at something in the replay. Now they'll check in with Dan Isoni at third. I think the question is whether Crawford went out of the baseline to make contact right there with Wellington Castillo but if it's a similar rule to the play at second he was sliding straight into home plate he just extended that left leg out there to get, make a little bit of contact with Welly. They will take a look headsets are coming on here Dan Isoni the third base ump and Dale Scott the crew chief. Ladies and gentlemen the previous play is under official video replay review. Runners are allowed to initiate contact with a fielder as a consequence of an otherwise permissible slide. Didn't seem to be anything too outrageous there on the part of Crawford. Well, he did extend that left leg to get a piece of Wellington Castillo, but his right leg and the rest of his body ended up sliding right across home plate. Out at home plate is all they're going to get. So now Chip wants to check in with Dan Isonia, and now he's going to make the slow walk to the mound and go to his right hander, Enrique Burgos, who will come in. The base is loaded, one out mess. He'll be the 10th pitcher the Diamondbacks have used in a 10 inning game.
Out in the 10th, Patrick Corbin came on, got one out. Now it's Enrique Burgos who inherits a bases loaded mess. And Burgos has been borderline out of control in his last few appearances. He pitched Monday at Dodger Stadium and really struggled just throwing strikes and working the final inning of a 10-2 ball game. He has three blown saves and a loss in his last nine appearances, and the ERA is over six. Well, he's got about two seconds to ease into it here. One, two. Go get him. Eduardo Nunez is the hitter. Bases full and one out. Nunez has a single, a double, and an RBI sack fly. Fastball, wild swing by Nunez, and it's one and one. This is the final major league game still going tonight. Rockies have closed out that win at San Diego. They beat the Padres 4 1 at Petco Park. Rangers and Angels are done in Anaheim. Texas won that 2 1. Mariners 3 2 winners in Oakland. Ball inside is ball two. It's two and one. Pitcher spot is up next for the Giants. Connor Gillespie in the on deck circle. Diamondbacks on their 10th pitcher of this ball game, and believe it or not, somebody's warming up in the bullpen. It's the rookie, Matt Cook. Who was anxiously awaiting his major league debut? That one kicks away from Castillo. Here comes Pence, and the Giants have the lead. Enrique Burgos wild again. And it's 6 5 San Francisco. Wild pitch for the Diamondbacks this year with the bases loaded. Tied for the most in the majors. So Belt moves in at third, panic at second now. And a run in for the Giants. Two and two on Nunez with Gillespie on deck. Giants need this one. Dodgers have already lost in Miami. They can pull within four games of L.A. for the NL West lead. That one gets behind him. And it carry him right back to Castillo. Otherwise, Belt may have come in and scored. Burgos is spraying it all over the yard. Four seam fastball reared back and threw it right by the hitter, right by the catcher, right by the umpire, all the way to the backstop. Full count three and two. Strikes out Nunez for the second out. That was one of the uglier bats on both ends you will ever see. A couple of wild pitches. Nunez swung at one of those. Not an artistic success. Pinch hitting for Hunter Strickland, number 21, Connor Gillespie. So Gillespie is announced as the pinch hitter for Strickland. 247 and five homers. 
Two of those home runs have come as a pinch hitter. Brandon Belt at third, Joe Panic at second. Two outs and a run in. Gillespie doesn't get the chance to play a whole lot anymore. Ever since Eduardo Nunez was acquired from the Twins. Gillespie just three for his last 21 up there. But that goes back over the last month. Good fastball from Burgos and it's one and one Diamondbacks in the bottom of the tenth will have Owings Jensen and Goldschmidt two three and four. Santiago Casilla warming up in the giant bullpen their closure situation has been a mess lately. Two run lead at Colorado on Wednesday. Rockies got three in the bottom of the inning against Casilla and Nathan. Burgos behind on Gillespie. Two balls and a strike. Approaching the four hour mark in the ball game. Two and two on Gillespie with two outs. Same two teams tomorrow night. A 5 10 first pitch. Diamond back live pregame show at 4 30. Archie Bradley and Johnny Cueto. Zach Greinke and Matt Moore here Sunday. He did not go, says Dan Isonia. And it's a full count three and two. So Burgos has run it full on both batters he's faced. Zach will start Sunday against Matt Moore, the lefty. Focus. Just barely got a piece of that one. 96 up and in right at the hands. Popped it up, foul ground, third base side for Drury. But the Giants take the lead, 6-5, as we go to the bottom of the 10th in Phoenix.
to the Giants' struggles on this road trip, their bullpen has been far from a sure thing. Corey Guerin blows a save at Wrigley. Then former D-back Matt Reynolds follows another blown save and another Cub comeback win. Then at Coors Field the other day, Santiago Casillas serves it up to Nolan Arenado. He was removed from the game in the ninth inning. Gave up a homer and a single, got only one batter out. So here is Casilla to try and close this out. With a 6-5 lead, he has two blown saves in the last nine games, seven blown saves for the year. That's tied for the second most of the major leagues. As ERA since August 14th, just a tick under eight. Fastball, curveball, slider combination from Casilla. And he makes mistakes in the middle of the plate. They tend to get hit hard. Chris Owings will lead it off. Jake Lamb is in the on deck circle. He would hit for Kyle Jensen, then Goldie after that. Chris has a couple of singles and a run scored tonight. The backs have been out hit 10 to 7. They trail at 6 5. Will Smith, the left-hander, will start throwing again in the giant bullpen. With Lamb on deck. It's closer by committee right now for Bruce Bochy. That fastball missed. Two and one. <laughs> hey. the entire ballpark thought that one was a strike, except for the umpire. The first acts up belt underhand toss to see is there on the way. Now here's the announcement for Jake Lamb. These two have seen each other before. Opener of a four game series at AT&T Park earlier this year. And then Jake the last time we were there went the other way. He's homered twice off Casilla this season. Bruce Bochy has a lefty Will Smith warming up in the pen but he'll stick with Casilla against Lamb. Three for seven lifetime all three hits have been home runs including the two this year. All one. Jake went five for 25 on the last road trip, including a couple of homers. But numbers against Casilla. Now playing, it's one and one. This is a pretty big leap of faith for Bruce Bochy. I, I frankly, considering the way the bullpen has performed on this road trip alone. It's shocking that he's leaving Casilla in there. And given his history of playing matchups late in close games, I, I really thought he was going to bring in Will Smith to face Jake Lamb. Diamondbacks are all right handed from this point on. Drives it deep to center field. Way back. He did it again. It's gone. For Jake Lamb, another home run off Santiago Casilla, who blows another save, and it's 6 6. That is remarkable. Fastball, oh, 
ball up there above the belt out over the plate. Man, he actually owns this guy. He's got the pink slip on Santiago Casilla. Well, let's make it back to back and get out of here. Goldie has walked and singled. Buckled him with a breaking ball and it's 0 and 1. Knuckle curve there from Casilla. Boy, Jake Lamb wearing Casilla out. A jumbo Jack. And Goldie takes one between the fours. He's the winning run. Now the fans react after the Jake Lamb home run. Paul Goldschmidt gets hit, but it was a knuckle curve that Santiago Casillas just tried to overthrow that time. Here comes Dave Rigetti. Flames are getting a little higher right now. Wellington and Castillo will be the hitter. He's 0 for 4 tonight. This is the way things have gone for the Giants as of late. They are just 17 and 32 since the All-Star break. They've lost 11 of their last 17 overall. They need this one. The Dodgers have already lost in Miami 4-1. He has already blown the save. Now just trying to get out of the tenth. Castillo can win it right here. Still thinking about that Jake Lamb home run. You better believe he is. Make another mistake. Bruce Bochy had the lefty. Fastball is in there, and it's 0 2 on Beef Wellington. I've had to see a 1 5 5 and 1 6 1 on that last delivery. Wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Goldie take second base. Goldie 23 for 28 in his stolen base attempts. And Casilla will use the slide step occasionally, but on that regular leg kick, he's really slow. Goldie takes off, got a big jump. Casilla's in the dirt. Stolen base, number 24, he's the winning run. That one knocked Wellington down in his keister. And now Casilla's spraying it all over the yard. Breaking ball again, just didn't finish the pitch, left it up and in, making it an easy steal for Goldie. One and two on Castillo. Single can win the ball game. Lamb's already tied it with another homer. Giants front office is here watching this one. Even Larry Bear. Just in the booth, a couple down from us to the left. They need this one and they know it. 
Running out of time here on September 9th. It's up to Yasmani Tomas. Right field. Two for four, yes, a pair of singles today. Tomas has a walk-off hit earlier this year. Winning run 90 feet away with two outs here in the 10th. He has now blown three saves in his last 10 games. Asmani checks his swing on that knuckle curveball from Casilla, and he's ahead two balls and a strike. Just hasn't been able to command that knuckle curve at all in this outing. The slider's been okay for him. The fastball's been all right. That knuckle curve has been all over the place. That'll work. Asmani beat the Cubs with a walk-off on the first home stand of the year, April 8th. Only the winning run at third and two outs. Fought it off. Panic is there, though. And that's the end of the tenth. Giants got one in the tenth. Diamondbacks answer. We'll head to the eleven. Six six. Cook making his major league debut. 
in a 6 6 ball game in the 11th inning which is apropos because he's the 11th pitcher used by the Diamondbacks tonight a franchise record his big league debut 25 year old right hander acquired for the Mets last August in the trade that sent Addison Reed to New York. The Matt has split this year defense. between Double A Mobile and Triple A Reno. 21 appearances, all of them starts. Six and six with a 4 0 ADR. Strike throw, only 19 walks in 121 in the third innings pitched. He has surrendered 10 home runs in those 121 innings at the minor league level. He's been with Reno only over the last month or so, but he pitched well there for Phil Nevin. Some defensive changes behind him. Jake Lamb, who's homer off Casilla, tied it up. Will stay in the ball game and take over at third, replacing Brandon Drury. Drury moves out to left, taking over for Kyle Jensen after Lamb hit for Jensen. So welcome to the big leagues, Matt Cook. Go get him. Denard Span leads it off. Eleven pitchers in an eleven inning game. And our span rips that one foul and it's 0 1. Interesting thing about Matt Cook was that he actually pitched better at Reno than he did with Mobile, which is backwards because it's a lot easier to pitch in the Southern League than in the Coast League. But the numbers at Reno were very encouraging for the 25 year old after he had some nagging injury issues playing for Robbie Hammock at Double A Mobile. He was twice on the DL with the Bay Bears. But once he went to Reno August 1st, nice change up there. Cook seven starts at AAA, went four and two with a 3 0 9 ERA, and walked only six in just under 47 innings. Two and two to Denard Span. Span tonight, 0 for 5. So he is hitless now in his last 25 at bats. Offensive struggles that the Giants have gone through pretty much the entire second half. It hasn't spared anybody in that first base dugout. They've all gone through some really rough times. The worst record in baseball since the All Star break 17 and 32. Full count on Span 3 and 2. Giants on this trip lost. Three of four at Wrigley Field of the Cubs, then dropped two of three in Colorado against the Rockies. Tonight, the first of three here in Phoenix. And Matt Cook walks the first hitter he faces in the big leagues. The speedy span with 12 stolen bases that'll bring up Angel Pagan. Left fielder Angel Pagan. Pagan homered in the seventh. From the right hand side of the plate against Edwin Escobar. His only hit tonight, he's one for five. Two for 31 on this, pardon me, two for 30 on this Giants road trip. Careful. Bach and Bob over there, first base. Yeah, Bob Davidson, the first base umpire. Span holds. Pagan shows bunt, pulls back, and takes the ball. It's one and zero. Pagan has not put down a sacrifice bunt all season, but given their struggles and given Pagan's struggles recently, you might uh, change up your normal thinking and just try to move that runner into scoring position with Angel Pagan. Pagan, a switch hitter, of course. He's about 20 points better from the left hand side. And 
Brent Cook really having trouble throwing that fastball for strikes. And he walks Span. Now he's got himself behind on Pagan, 2-0. Oh. So far for Matt, twice as many balls as strikes. Cook from Cherokee, Iowa, pitched at the University of Louisville. Third round pick by the Mets in the draft four years ago. Big guy out there, 6'3, 215. Behind on Pagan, 3 0. Walked the first two hitters he's faced in the big leagues. That's the eighth walk of the night issued by D-backs pitchers. Mike Butcher. And just the way the innings rolled and the hitters uh, made their way to the plate and Chip and the Diamondbacks using that pitching staff, Zach Godley and Patrick Corbin, the two guys that you would consider to be your long men in the bullpen, got a total of one out between them. And both out of the game, you're down to Andrew Chapin right now and Dominic Leone is the only two pitchers available, at least as far as relief pitchers for the Diamondbacks. Godley was not sharp when he came on to start the 10th. He walked Crawford, then gave up a double to Pence. First base was open. Catcher, so they walked the lefty belt and brought in Corbin, who faced only one batter. And now Matt Cook will work to Buster Posey. Two on, nobody out. Well, the fact that Andrew Chafin is sitting in the dugout with his hat off, I wonder if he's not available anymore. Chafin was warming up when Ruby De La Rosa was in trouble in the second inning, which was four hours ago. And Matt Cook, 12 pitches, nine of them balls. Here's Andrew. He's been out for the last several months. I forgot Silvino Bracho is also available. Dominic Leone's back there as well. There's Silvino. A strike and it's two and one. And Dominic Leone has started warming up in the Sanderson Ford Open. Well, the guy that's down there with his feet up and deserves a break is Mark Reed, the bullpen catcher. <laughs> Reed has been warming up guys since the second inning. <laughs> He hits a high fly ball to right center field. Tomas has it on the track. Span tags and heads for third. He's the go-ahead run with one out. Shortstop. Brandon Crawford is the hitter. He walked his last time up against Godley. 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts today. Leads the Giants with those 77 RBIs, but just 16 of them since the All Star break. Infield will creep in for the D backs. Now they back off just a bit. Span at third, Pagan at first, and one out.
Hunter Pence whom the D-backs have yet to retire tonight is on deck. He's got four hits and a walk two doubles airstrike one. That, that hop would be higher than it was. It came back down to Goldie fairly quickly, and they're able to cut down the go ahead run at home plate. Right fielder. Man may have also assumed that Goldie was going to try to turn two up the middle there on that ground ball, but he makes the right play coming home to get Span on the tag play. Giants have runners at first and second now with two outs. Well, Matt Cook can wiggle his way off the hook here, but he's going to have to retire Pence for the first time tonight. Two singles, two doubles, a walk, and he scored four times. Starts it off with a strike, 0 1. Good fastball there from young Matt Cook. Tough way to make your big league debut. Long way from Binghamton and Mobile, pitching to Buster Posey and Hunter Pence. Right there, he dotted that outside corner twice with tailing fastballs to jump ahead in the count. So just scoot it over another six or eight inches. See if you can get Hunter Pence to chase one out there. Just got a piece of that fastball, and it stays one and two. Cook walked the first two batters he faced his first two batters in the big leagues and a chance to get out of this mess here and send us to the home half of the 11th with a 6 6 score. Back to the mound Castillo has it in front of the plate quick throw and a nice scoop by Goldie. Wellington Castillo with a terrific play. And Matt Cook, despite walking the first two in the inning, keeps the Giants scoreless.
presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Feed it. What a great play by Wellington Castillo here to win the top of the 11th and an even better play by Goldie. A great play on both ends. Goldie reaching back into the baseline to take that throw and Wellington had to really make an adjustment there. He wanted to kind of glove that ball into the bare hand. It hit the ground, kind of checked up. He was forced just to barehand it and fire as quickly as he could. Nice play. Well, here at the age of 41 is the veteran Joe Nathan. Signed a minor league deal with the Giants in the middle of August. Was brought up from Double A Richmond September 3rd. He came into their ball game Wednesday at Colorado with two runners on base, gave up two singles, and had a blown save. So he'll face Brandon Drury to start the bottom of the 11th inning. Drury homered back in the second off Madison Bumgarner. He's one for four. And for a 10 year stretch, nobody had more saves in the game than Joe Nathan from 2004 to 2014. He saved 375 ball games. Now a gray beard at the age of 41. That's over the screen, and it's one and one. Flashback some Brandon Drury heroics. He's been a walk off hero this year, a couple of times, in fact. Beat the Dodgers earlier this season. And Drury's aboard. Got a curve ball from Nathan and hit it hard to shortstop. Lead off single. Boy, not easy to get a ground ball through Brandon Crawford out there at shortstop, but that ball was smoked off the bat of Brandon Drury. Just snuck underneath the glove and on into left field for a knock. Boy, he's really hit the ball hard lately, Brandon Drury. So the D backs have a chance to win the ball game. The rookie Mitch Hanniger 0 for 4. Pitcher spawn is up next. Phil Goslin in the on deck circle. He would hit for Matt Cook. And so that means Dominic Leone, who was warming up earlier in the ball game, would get the top of the 12th if we get that far. And a six time All Star, originally drafted by the Giants back in 1995 as a shortstop on a Stony Brook. 377 career saves. He's had two Tommy Johns. Trying coming back this year with the Cubs. They let him go August 6th. Two and one. Jury does not run. He's got no stolen bases on the air. He's only attempted one. Dave McKay coaching at first. Hitters count for Hanniger. Two balls and a strike. Jury holds. That pitch gets away from Posey. And the Diamondbacks have the winning run in scoring position with nobody out. Now 
That's the one weak spot in Buster Posey's game. Tremendous offensive player, real good framer of pitches, calls a good game, has some issues blocking balls in the dirt from time to time. Swinging for the downs on that 3 1, and the count is full. That's your Nathan fastball these days. It's about 90 91. Goslin on deck. He would hit for Cook. Move that runner. D backs can win it. They'll get Matt Cook a win in his major league debut. That's out of play. Second, nobody out. Three and two on Mitch Hanniger. The 41 year old veteran and the 25 year old rookie. Hanniger gets it in the air. Right field for Pence. Drury's at second. And he's headed for third. Here's the throw. Got to hustle in there. It's cut off. And the winning run is 90 feet away. He wanted him to move the runner. There you go. That'll work. Deep fly ball to right field. Ground ball to the right side. Whatever it takes. Brandon Drury tags and advances. The throw was offline. That's why Brandon Crawford cut it rather than let it go through to third base. So Phil Goslin now can win. He'll hit for Matt Cook. 280 and two homers for Phil. He has really hit the ball well lately, even when his playing time has not quite been there. Last 26 games, only five starts. He's hit over 330. Infield comes in for San Francisco. Winning run at third with one out. Oh, the right side really playing in Brandon Belt up on the grass Joe panic right on the edge of the infield grass and we know Phil likes to hit the ball that direction. That outfield this is about as shallow as you can play in outfield. The gone span Pence left to right. All one slider from Nathan. 69 plate appearances as a pinch hitter for Phil Goslin this year. 266, including a homer. Baxter's got the Santa outfit on. Good way to open up this 10 game homestand. Get a win over the Giants. The 1 0 to Goslin. Checks his swing. It's in there. 1 and 1. Doubled up on the slider. Ball is ball two. <laughs> now that's a rally cap. That's a serious rally cap. Two. 
Full count. Segura on deck. We always feel good about Bill Gosselin in a spot like this. Just get it in play. Three two pitch. Got him. Goslin can't make contact. That's the second out. Elevated fastball out of the zone. You can see the reaction by Phil Goslin. He knows he did a bad thing right there. Yep. But Joe Nathan, you see him doing it right now. There's something on the right side of his hat right there. I'm not sure what it is, but he's been going to that pretty steadily. Something for grip? Yeah, quite possibly. It might just be rosin on. You can see it on the right side of the bill of his cap right there. I think it's more underneath the cap where he's really pressing his thumb. Let's see what he does here as Segura comes up. There it is. Yeah, getting, well, what is that? He's getting what all loaded that? up. Well, I'd have to make Dale Scott go out there and take a look. Well, if Alan Campbell's watching, maybe he can get word to the dugout. Here's Segura now, winning run at third and two down. He was pressing hard on the underside of that bill, that's for sure. All one. Get the winning run to third, but he's left there and will go to the 12th, tied at six. Can't tell the players without a scorecard. <laughs> and we've set a couple of records. Dominic Leone, the right-hander, his 21st Four, uh, appearance in ERA, now just over pitching. seven Number and a half. 54. He's the 12th Dominic. different pitcher in a 12-inning game used by the Diamondbacks. 12 pitchers in one ball game, a new D-backs record. And he's also the 26th player used in this ball game, a new Diamondback record. How about that. Leon, last pitch for the D-backs August 24th against the Braves here. He suffered a blown save. 
He gave up runs in 10 of his last 15 appearances with the Diamondbacks before he was optioned to Reno at the end of last month. Alberto Quintero, the bullpen catcher, and Silvino Bracho, and Mark Reed, the other bullpen catcher. That's it. 12 pitchers as we start the 12th inning. Brandon Belts has singled twice, walked twice. He's got an RBI score to run. Well, that's the way things have gone for Dominic Leone. In his last 15 major league innings, he's given up 15 runs on 28 hits, including five home runs. One and one on belt. Leads the Giants with 15 homers. Homered Wednesday at Colorado is first since August 13th. But you won't get Belt to chase. His plate discipline has really advanced this year. 89 walks already, by far a career high. Good for fourth in the league coming into tonight. The most in a season by a Giants hitter since Barry Bonds in 07. Checks his swing, but that one is in there for a strike, and it's two and two. The Giants brass, even ownership is here. They need this one. Dodgers lost in Miami 4 1. Giants can close within four of the NLS lead. Full count on Bell 3 and 2. Giants reeling right now. They've lost 11 of their last 17. Joe Panic on deck, Eduardo Nunez behind him. And sure enough, Belt draws a base on balls, his third tonight. He's been dramatically better in that department this year. And the go-ahead run is at first with nobody Second out for Panic. Joe Panic. Panic has walked. He's got an RBI single. One for four. Joe Panic has put down three sack bunts this season if Bruce Bochy chooses to go that direction. I still can't believe he let Casilla face Jake Lamb. I know. <laughs> well, Leone, eight pitches so far, five of them outside the strike zone. I don't think Webby's going to come and talk to us anymore after this one. He was all smiles before the game. Brandon Webb checking in. How you doing? Good to see you. Webby loves extra innings. Well, he came to the right place. Yes, he did. A base hit for Panic. Belt will stop at second. Roll just by Segura. A walk and a single open up to Giant 12th against Dominic Leone. Third baseman Eduardo Nunez. Nunez drove in the Giants' first run back in the second, a sack fly. Had an RBI double in the fourth, singled in the sixth. He has struck out his last two times up. Diamondbacks getting their bunt defense in order. 
Paul Goldschmidt comes out and tells Dominic Leone what play is on. Nunez has put down a couple of sack bunts when he was a member of the Twins, just twice. Goldie with his feet on the grass at first. Lamb near the bag at third. Goldie charging from first. Here he comes. Nunez fouls it back. Corey Guerin has started warming up with a giant bullpen. Pitcher spot is up next. Kelby Tomlinson in the on deck circle. There's Corey Guerin, the John Snow of the National League West. Nunez fouls the bunt back to the screen and it's 0 and 2. Well, this is, that's the kind of stuff that in a 6 6 game of the 12th inning must make a manager nuts. You know, it really does. Uh, the, the, the harsh reality is players don't practice bunting. If you come watch batting practice at the ballpark, you know, the first two pitches from the batting practice pitcher, they'll bunt one to first, they'll bunt one to third. And, Go to Hacken. And that's the only bunting practice most guys get. Some of the guys that bunt for a base hit will come out and do some early bunting, get out there against the machine, do some bunting. But for the most part, it's just an afterthought. Holds back. Takes ball one. Well, they call it batting practice, not bunting practice. Now Roberto Kelly's going to walk all the way down there and figure this out. Nunez has put himself and his team in a hole here. That's headed for radio. That almost knocked uh, Pat O'Connell's hat off in the <laughs> press box. He's got the rally sombrero on over there. Brandon Belt at second. Joe Panic at first. No outs. One and two on Eduardo Nunez. Another one. Brandon Webb standing by with Jody Jackson, anxiously awaiting the opportunity to bring you Diamondback Live postgame show. Webb, you going to break down Ruby De La Rosa, who Nearly five hours ago, pitched his first game for the D-backs since May 25th. He's almost had enough rest to start again tomorrow. Might have to figure <laughs> out a way to bring him into the game later tonight.
And this one will stay playable. Goldie wants it. Infield fly rule is called, and that's the first out. Kelby Tomlinson. Just under 40 games of the Giants this year, hitting 298. Yeah, it's been much of the summer in the minor Tomlinson. leagues, just recalled by the Giants last week. Scott might be the only guy in a ballpark that's still keeping score. <laughs> I'm running out of room myself. <laughs> yeah. Twelve pitchers, I got nowhere to put them. <laughs> Up the middle and in the center field. Here comes Belt with a go-ahead run. Here's the throw. It is cut off. They got panic. Hung up between second and third. Lamb applies the tag, but the Giants take a 7-6 lead. And Tomlinson sneaks into second. Adder came up throwing, but not in time to get the lead run. Just kind of smothers that fastball away back up the middle of the field. Nobody could get to it. Nice try by Mitch Hanniger to charge that ball hard and unleash a throw toward home plate. They had no chance to get the lead runner Brandon Belt, so Goldie cut the ball off, made sure they got at least one out on the play. So Dominic Leone gives up the go-ahead run. Now a 7-6 ball game. Two outs. Tomlinson's at second for Denard Span, who is 0 for 5 with a walk. Diamondbacks in the bottom of the 12th will have Chris Owings. Jake Lamb and Paul Goldschmidt, two, three, and four. Foul ground, left side for Drury. And he Lambs over there, pardon me. That planked off a fan. One and one on span. Giants scored a run in the top of the seventh. Diamondbacks answered. Giants scored a run in the top of the tenth. D backs answered. Now they've taken a 7 6 lead in the twelfth. Seen a lot worse pitches than this called strikes tonight. That slider right there at the knees on the inside corner doesn't get the call this time. Rough night, Dale. Hmm. Well, we just crossed the five hour mark. Span hits a rocket to right. Yes, Monty runs it down. A strand Tomlinson. But his single gets the go ahead run across. D backs down 7 6.
across the five hour mark here on a Friday night at Chase Field in downtown Phoenix. And the new pitcher for the Giants, their seventh of the ball game is the right hander Corey Garrett. And the RH just over four and a half in 50 appearances. It's been rough going lately. He's given up 15 runs in his last 10 innings. And he'll face Owings, Lamb, and Goldie, two, three, and four in the Arizona 12. Bullpen is busy for Bruce Bochy. The lefty Javier Lopez and the right hander looks like Matt Kane. It is. You got the lefty Lamb on deck last time. Bruce Bochy let Lamb face the right hander Casilla. That was in the bottom of the tenth, and Jake hit a home run. That tied the ball game at six. Diamondbacks need another run here, at least one. And Owings is just the guy to get it started. He's got two hits today, both singles. Yeah, I'd love to see Co get on there, but I don't think Garen would stay in the ball game at that point. Probably see Javi Lopez to face Jake Lamb, but Garen is the guy that uh, every time he's in the ball game, the Diamondbacks turn into a track meet. They get guys on base against him, and he's got a huge tell in his delivery when he's going to home plate, and the Diamondbacks have really exploited it. Slider is in there, and it's 0-2. You got to figure he's going to let Lopez come in and face Lamb, regardless of what happens with Owings, especially after he got burned in the tenth. And another slider, and he strikes out CO, one down. Both pitching staffs have thrown well over 200 pitches in this ball game tonight. The Diamondbacks at 242. The Giants now at 207 in counting. Here's Bochi up on the top step, looking down in the dugout. And he's got Lopez down there. Lamb has homered off Corey Guerin this year. Dale Scott walking out to the mound and now Bruce Bochy finally makes his way out there. He's going to check in with Dale Scott. This usually indicates a double switch when you go to the umpire first. Dale Scott signals to the bullpen. Boach, you're going to go get Corey Guerin. We'll sort it out when we come back from Chase Field. Well, here's the situation if you're Bruce Bochy. You brought in your eighth pitcher tonight, the left hander Javier Lopez, to face the left hand hitting Jake Lamb. You see the numbers on Lopez. But you've got the right hand hitter Paul Goldschmidt coming up next. So Corey Guerin, the right hand pitcher, is out in left field. He has replaced Angel Pagan. So you got to figure that Lopez gets Lamb, and then 
If and when Goldie comes up, Garen comes back in and goes back to the mound. So Lopez and Lamb with one out here in the 12. Jake hitting only 157 against left hand pitchers this year, but that does include four home runs. Two and oh. In the 10th off Santiago Casilla, Bruce Bochy had a lefty up in the bullpen, Will Smith, but let Casilla face Lamb anyway, and he tied the ball game. His third home run off Casilla this year. So now he's got the lefty Lopez in there in the 12th. And Lopez throwing mid 80s as he always does is behind 3 0. Giants have the shift on. That's a strike. He walked him. Tying runs aboard with one out. Here comes Goldie. And here comes Bruce Bochy. He's got Matt Kane warming up in the bullpen. And he's going to go back and check with Dale Scott. Now Gorky's Hernandez is coming off the bench. And he's headed to the outfield, presumably to replace Garen in left. And Garen will go back to the mound. And that's what they'll do. Lopez came in to get the lefty lamb walked him with one out and they'll hand the ball back to Corey Garen to face Goldie when we come back. Corey Garen, who began this 12th inning by striking out Chris Owings, then went out to play left field, is back on the mound to face Goldie with Jake Lamb at first and one out. Gorky's Hernandez, the new left fielder. Does this count as one appearance or two? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. First time the a Giants pitcher has done this, pitched, played a position in the field, and then come back and pitch since 2007. All one to Goldie. Goldie won for three lifetime against Garen with a double. Goldie has walked, singled, been hit by a pitch, scored a run, stolen a base, and struck out twice. A lot can happen in five hours. Scored in the seventh to take the lead. Diamondbacks answered in the home half. 
Giants scored in the tenth to take the lead. And the Diamondbacks answered in a home head. Can they do it again in the twelfth? Slow slider from Garen. Goldie all smiles up there two and one. You have to know they're not going to give in to Paul Goldschmidt even in a 2 0 count Garen goes to the breaking ball sweeps it out there on the outside part of the plate. Jake Lamb takes off. He got a big jump. The throw from Posey is high and late. Tying runners in at second. And the pitch to Goldie a ball. It's three and one. I mentioned Garen has a huge tail. You'll see him start leaning ever so slightly, getting his weight onto that back leg. Even Jake Lamb gets a big jump and steals the base. First base open they'll take the bat out of Goldie's hands in a 3 1 count and work to Wellington Castillo. Oh, well he's due against this guy three previous at bats has struck out twice and hit into a double play due to do something big right here. Winning runs are on base. Winning run anyway, tying run at second, winning run at first, one out for Castillo's 0 for 5. Two and oh. Three balls and no strikes. Garen can't find it. Boy, he struck out Owings on well, three pitches. Went out to play left field, and since he's come back to the mound, he can't throw a strike. Just trying to get out of the way. Yeah, Wellington looked like he had the green light there, three and zero. Oh, but that fastball tailing up and in, he was just trying to get out of the way. That time, the ball hit the bat. Well, when you throw that two seamer like that, the ball is your right hand hitter chasing you. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of getting out of the way; it's coming after you. Three one now. Jake Lamb is the tying run at second. Paul Goldschmidt the winning run at first. One out. And a three two count on Wellington Castillo.
Dale Scott rings him up. Been a long night. Five and a half hours worth the Dale Scott strike zone. And it's making the night even longer. And Wellington Castillo's been ejected. To go to an automated strike zone. This is ridiculous. Well, Just ridiculous. We've seen Dale Scott a number of times this year, and frankly, every time we've seen him, it's been just like this. Yeah, just horrible ball strike calls all night long for both sides. Yeah, zero consistency. A lot of misses. Well, it's up to Yasmani Tomas. Tomas had a chance in the eighth inning. Or correct that, make it the tenth, and he grounded out. Two on and two out, bottom twelve. Now Asmani singled in the fourth and the sixth tonight. Two for five. And check his swing, and it's 0 and 1. Tying runs at second and winning runs at first. He started at 6.40 local time. It's now midnight. A slider right here. Woo. Through the slider, but missed. Tomas takes and it's two and one. Yeah, hopefully, he got a better look at that one than he did the first one when he took that half hearted swing. Got to see the ball, see the ball. This guy's not going to overpower you. Back to the slider and got him to chase, and it's two and two. Island backs down to their last strike. He backs live post game show, standing by Brandon Webb and Jody Jackson. Backs have used a record 12 pitchers and 26 players. The 2 2 to Yasmani Tomas. Count is full. Well, that'll get the runners started. Remember, Goldie's the winning run at first. So anything in the gap of the Diamondbacks can win it. Two to Tomas. Went to the slider. I'd really be surprised to see Garen throw a fastball. He might. You know, he's got so much movement on that two seamer, especially if he comes inside, he can possibly jam Yasmani with it. But some of the swings we've seen on that slider away, I got to believe he's going to stick with his bread and butter and try to lead Yasmani out of the zone once again. Brandon Drury on deck, he would be next. 
Three balls, two strikes, two outs in the bottom of the 12. There you go, the runners. Tomas. Oh, got one to hit right there. Fouled it back. And stayed over the plate that time. Stuck with the slider again. Go, Tomas hits it up the middle. Panic is there behind Goldie, and the Giants win the ball game in 12 innings, 7-6. We saw a little bit of everything here tonight to open up this 10-game homestand. Just under five and a half hours. Quite sure what to say about this one. <laughs> I know how you feel. It started a long time ago with Ruby De La Rosa's return to the mound, and then everybody else in the organization got the pitch. Well, I can't think of two people more deserving to sum this one up than Brandon Webb and Jody Jackson, and they're standing by. We would love to, guys. There's no question. DVAX Live post game is coming your way in moments. Yeah, Brandon, we talked about in the eighth. You know, we're going to look at Ruby. Uh, there's so much to look at in this game. Unfortunately, it was a loss for the Arizona Diamondbacks. But uh, there was one moment, though, where we saw some ownage in this one, and we're going to break that down. Absolutely. It was a decision by Bochy that he probably shouldn't have made another play to the base running there in the seventh inning. It was a it was a turnaround point I think for uh, for the D-backs as well. Yeah I mean we saw Jake Lamb get another home run against Santiago Casilla. He's now four for eight with four home runs against him. So we'll look at that. This one goes down in the books for the D-backs as a loss but of course Jake Lamb we saw a pretty incredible performance there. Final and 12. DVX Live coming your way. We'll hear from the manager, Chip Hale. We will take a look at some of the key plays in this one. And of course, the Giants winning run. All coming your way in moments here on Fox Sports Arizona. Thanks for hanging with us, but we're not done yet. DVX Live is next.